Welcome to the Tech Ranch, where we explore the world of living with technology. Get ready to take a deep dive into the latest gadgets, apps, and innovations with your hosts, the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson, and his trusty co-host, Steve Botkin. Join us on this exciting journey, and don't forget to visit thetechranch.com for even more exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marlo and Steve to the Tech Ranch. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, by the way, everybody, thanks for joining us on the Tech Ranch. Hey, Steve. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, I'm having... I'm, this has been such a great week for me for tech. Why? Come on. I wake up in the morning. I have uh, robots running on every floor of my house, vacuum cleaners. I go outside. There's a robot cutting my grass. And I come to work, and I'm greeted... By Astro. Astro's cool. I love Astro. You seen him for the first time today. What would you think of him? He's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's zipping around the house. Tall with a periscope that I thought he would be, but <laughs> Oh, that's right. I think you have seen him before, yeah, haven't I saw you? Him I'm week. sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. I keep I keep thinking that we just got it, but it's been here about a week and a half now. You know, one of the things I saw this week too, so you've had a great week of tech, but not everybody has. Because earlier this week, I believe it was uh, Wednesday, the people that short sold uh, NVIDIA lost yeah. $2.2 billion that day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Don't short sell tech, I guess. Well, unless you're, they could, some things I'm sure they've made money on before, but maybe not this week. Yeah, NVIDIA did really, is doing really, really well yeah. right now. Well, They're not, they've just joined the trillion dollar company club, yeah that's a small club small club of i believe it's now six companies six companies yeah i mean google and what's interesting about nvidia getting there is that google is at uh, their market cap is 1.08 bill or trillion nvidia is at one but everybody knows google or alphabet yeah what's nvidia right yeah they make video cards right but they've really jumped on the ai bandwagon and so they're creating all these products around artificial intelligence and that's, they're just, they're, they're like, and I know we talked about this earlier this week, but they're like the, the people who used to sell the shovels to the gold miners. This is who NVIDIA is now. They've just, they're just redefining who they are. It's amazing. And they're, they're reaping the rewards for it right now. I'm trying to think the technology side of, uh, shovels and gold mining, the pan and yeah, the mule. Good luck. There's an al- there's an analogy there somewhere. Yeah, I'm, sure. I, I'm grasping yeah, for it though. Yeah, you <laughs> are. You are. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's. Gonna <laughs> so that's been interesting this week. You know, a little later in the show too, we're going to be r- we're really going to dive into TikTok in Montana. This is such a fascinating topic. Now, and you and I talked earlier in the week about this. We and did. You were uh, you were like the more you were reading, you were like, wait a minute, yeah. there's way more. So, question. Yeah. Did you take TikTok off your phone yet? So, unfortunately, because of my crazy schedule this week, I have not, but I plan to do that. But the challenge I have is that at work, because of National Day calendar... It's integrated in so many different places. We have, we do. We have it integrated at work because we, we post videos to TikTok for, for National Days. So, I I'm... At a loss, really, at what to do about TikTok right now, unless I just say, you know what, we're just not going to participate, and that's that. And maybe that's what we do. Cold I'm, turkey. Yeah. We're going to be talking about that in a little bit, too. James. Yeah. James is amazing, by the way. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm probably, for the first couple minutes anyway, going to dominate that conversation. Are you going to monopolize things again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Just so you know. But I'll, that's I'll, fine. I will let you join in later. That's, I just, that, that's okay. Chris and I had to run things that, last yeah, week yeah. when you were playing with <laughs> Astro. <laughs> and yeah, thanks, Chris, by the way, yeah. for stepping in. I hear he was fascinating. Hey, Marlo, where are you? <laughs> Marlo. Because I'm playing with Astro. Marlo. Polo. <laughs> but Chris is amazing too, isn't he? Yeah, he, yeah. The breadth of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing in our office as well. So we're really fortunate to have. Now him I know why team. your office runs so well. Yeah, yeah. He's it's Chris. He's he's amazing. He's really 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 good with tech. And and uh, like I said, we're very fortunate to have him on our team. 
Well, like this new computer program that we're working on for the second time now, and it's an entirely different screen than and what I was working with last week. And we're, we're supposed to be geeky, but yeah. you know we're having a hard time like figuring this thing out. So if there's some nuances in the program, everybody, it's because we're still trying to figure out this new software. But uh, when the geeks need a geek, we call that, Chris. Yeah, I call Chris. <laughs> <laughs> But he gets a kick out of doing this kind of yeah. stuff, you know, uh, which is which is great. Yeah, it's uh, um, James. I I have to admit he's with Cat Catalytic Conversations, and uh, we're really as opposed good. to Catatonic Conversations, yeah, or yeah. Catalytic Converters, yes. you know, it, which I will probably say once or twice because that well, that really? rolls off the tongue because <laughs> I've does. been trained that with that for a lot of years. People steal those though, yeah. But he uh, he's fascinating too, and he'll be joining us in a little bit and and uh, talking about you know the challenges that we all have with screen time and the health impact that it start that starting to show up because of it. Well, my wife works in the school district, and that's one of the things that she fights as an educator is screen time. And, and then you take a look at where education's gone because I feel bad for the kids that'll never know the joys of a snow day ever again, and. That is true. I never thought about there's that. A, there's a, a weird balance between the use of technology and the overuse of technology. You know, there's a, okay, it's a tool and it's a good tool, but when you get immersed in it and get lost in it, then I think there's a lot of dangers there, there especially are. on the mental health side of yeah. things. You know, I've noticed uh, this, this is a recent phenomenon for me. Um, I'll leave and I forget my phone and I'm doing it more and more and more all the time. It's Is not it that subconscious that I, you're like, I, I don't think, want that thing with I me. I think so. I, I really do believe that maybe I've reached a point where I've had enough because it just dings and whizzes and wings and, and does all kinds of so stuff. So you don't turn your, your notifications off? I need to do that. As you know, I've had, you know, my mom's had some health issues. So I, I've, I used to do this and then I left it on after the health scare because I just don't, you know, I'm, I'm the contact, right? So, but I need to relax about that a little bit. Life goes on. And so, yeah. And I would like to have nights of sleep. See, I have a rule. This thing go on Eight o'clock. Yeah. I shut the phone off. It, it's silent, muted. Done. So do you have, so nothing goes on with you after that point? No. No, no. phone calls? No. Nope. Wife time. You, okay. Yeah, it's family time. Okay. We're, we're, we're done. I, nope, that, that's my rule. And actually that started uh, when I was the mayor of Bismarck. Um, it started because well, there, that was had, a, there was a lot of extra time. That had to be too much. Yeah, and, and my live. wife put her foot down and said, you know, th we got to figure something out. And I'm like, fine. I'll people, shut my phone off at eight o'clock because people will call you at midnight and two o'clock. Absolutely, in the yeah. and I go to bed early and I get up early, and that was kind of our rule: is I, I'm going to shut the phone off at eight o'clock, and I enjoyed it. And if something happened city wise, it's like okay, if, is it's really bad? Send a quad car over to my house and sure get a hold and, of me and, that way. And and that can happen, you know, in your position or in you know in Former that position. position. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do. I, I really didn't appreciate that you didn't pick up the phone when I hit a pothole though at one thirty in the morning. Really? I, I was disappointed that you were not returning those phone calls. But. Well, <laughs> see, I shut the notifications <laughs> off too because I, I get a lot of texts because I yeah. tell people it. You know, if I'm in a meeting or don't call, don't leave a voicemail because my voicemail fills up daily. Yep. It, it's full. And I tell people, text me. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. If I'm in a meeting and I can and answer you and, and give you an answer or response, I can do that. Yeah. Um, but I shut the notifications off. So it's kind of at my discretion if I look to see that I got a text, because it'll say I had a text, uh, without the dinger going off. You know, so but, my phone most of the time is in silent mode during the day. <laughs> I think I have it backwards. And then I turn it on at night. Why so, would you do that? I know. I, I actually have. Well, I don't want to be disturbed with crazy stuff all the time during the day because the phone, my phone never stops. Right. Beeping. So well, that's why I had to shut off notifications. Yeah. It's like, I don't need to know I got an email. Right. I, well, and I even tell people, it's like, yeah, send me an email with the information. 
shoot me a text to let me know you sent me an email. And even even on your computer screen when you're working at work, right now 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 your email notifies you. You get a little pop up and another oh, yeah. pop up, and then something goes on over here. So the notifications on your screen, and it's nonstop. How do you actually get work done when all your screen all the time is popping up and telling you stuff? So I, I agree. I think notifications notifications has probably been the biggest disruptor of workflow you know in probably a century now there's one notification i don't shut off that i do appreciate that's the beer notification there's one of those i uh, see oh what am i missing there's here something popped up and said it's beer time steve <laughs> beer 30 all right uh no uh calendar okay calendar oh yeah 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 it, it, I've got so much going, and you're the same way. Yep. So much going Living on in my day. Calendar. If yep. if it's not my calendar, it doesn't exist. Yep. So I utilize my calendar a lot so that I know. Okay, in a half hour, I need to be somewhere else, right. or in 20 minutes, I need to be over here, or in 15 minutes, I need to be at the hairdresser. I like the oh. <laughs> intuitiveness too, because I have you know we we put the address that I'm going into in there and everything else. So it'll actually send a notification at the time, you know, oh, yeah. five minutes before you have to leave saying you, your trip is going to take you 22 minutes to get there. So to be on time, you need to leave at, you know, two yeah, integrated with whatever. Google maps. Yeah, or, exactly. Or, yeah. And that I, makes a lot I, of sense. I do love that feature. There's no doubt about that. And it's, it's great for time management. You've got a ton of traffic. You need to leave <laughs> early. Now, you need to leave yesterday in order to make it on time. Well, see that, <laughs> and I don't know if you've noticed this about me. If if you look at my watch, what time is it? Okay, every clock except my wife's alarm clock. Every clock I've got in my house, my vehicle, my wristwatch because I have a dumb wristwatch. I okay. like my dumb wrist. Yep, ten minutes fast. I set every clock ten minutes fast so that I've got that extra ten minutes banked into whatever my schedule looks like. So I've noticed that my wife does this as well. Is she really? Is she telling me something? You're always late. Just asking. <laughs> well, see, my wife will go, uh, hey, we got to go. And, I'm like, and then I'm always the one that's waiting for her. So I look at it this way. I'm on time when I'm, you know, 30 seconds early. The Tech Ranch. Let's get back to discovering the latest in technology with the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. So we're going to move into a little bit of digital health. James O'Farron is joining me from Fargo, North Dakota. And James, welcome to the Tech Ranch. Thank you. So let's get into it a little bit. I'm I'm really curious. I know there's a couple things that you want to talk about. I have a couple things I want to talk to you about as well. And one of them is the health Mm -hmm. of our youngsters nowadays. And what is you know what is a good screen time? Uh, Is there such a thing? I mean, let's talk Mm -hmm. about that a little bit. Yeah, so I have a bit of a different approach to thinking about screen usage than a lot of people do. There is the just the physiological health that comes into play, having a background in web development. There's the old school 20-20-20 rule, where for every 20 minutes you look at a screen, you look away at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Because most of what the challenge that arises when you're looking at a, a computer all the time is that it's not so much the light coming at you, it's actually the fact that your eyes are locked into one focal okay. distance for so long. So they're not adjusting back and forth. So looking at something you know, close up versus something further away is a lot more important uh, than actually co- coloration of the screen. Unless you're dealing with like sleep issues and then you have the blue light versus red light and circadian rhythms and all that kind of stuff comes into play. So keeping screens and other kinds of blue light systems away from bedtime is also really important. But it can help you wake up in the morning too. So there's that aspect too. But that we kind of been, have known that for ages. One of the things that I found fascinating about screens is more the relationship with tasks that they encourage. So if you think about like in the old days, back you know a few hundred years ago before the Industrial Revolution, we would have dedicated locations for different tasks in different zones of our life. Right, like we would have a bedroom, and we have a dining room, and we'd have a parlor for guests, and we'd have a workshop for doing work. And you would want to go to do something with people. You'd go to a place for doing that one particular thing, right? And whenever we do that, we'd have to walk 
from one to the other. We'd transition. There'd be like this buffer period where we'd have an opportunity to decompress from whatever was happening in the previous zone and then prepare for engaging and being present in the next zone, right? Have you ever had this, the, the experience where you walk through a doorway and you forget why you weren't going to It happens to me all the time. Place? Everybody happens. It, it, see, the thing is that that's very normal. That's actually a feature of the human psyche. It's actually not a bug. It doesn't mean you're getting old. That means you're functioning properly. Well, it's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody has that. <laughs> so if you walk back through the doorway, you'll remember what it is in the previous room because our memories are actually localized in space almost. We use the space we're in to Interesting. think our Interesting. So I have this recurring thing all the time, James. So yeah. I'll, I'll be leaving my office and I'll like forget my phone in my office, right? And I go and I do my customary saying goodbye to everybody or whatever. Right. I walk out, I get in my car. There are many times I've actually started my car and then I realize that I have left my phone in the <laughs> office. And this happens like 80 to 90% of the time. It drives me nuts and everybody in my office laughs about it because when I say goodbye, they know I don't actually mean it. They know I'm coming back in one more time. So yes, this happens all the time. <laughs> Which I, I, I actually, I think it's actually a good sign. That means you're not excessively attached to your phone. You have that phantom phone syndrome, phantom limb syndrome, where yeah. it becomes a part of you. And so if you're out of arm's reach from it, you start getting withdrawal symptoms, you know? It means you're not as yeah, far gone think, as some of us. I think you're right, and I, I would agree with that, yes. <laughs> So one of the things that, that I bring up about this whole process, though, of like using a space and leaving it and then going back into these kinds of things is that we're designed mentally, our brains are designed to be present with what's in front of us and not to keep track of things elsewhere, yeah. right? So if you're dealing with a stressful situation in the library and then you walk into the kitchen, you can actually leave behind that stress in the library, like physically leave it behind and be present with what's in front of you. That ability to shift zones helps us kind of narrow our focus and keep like bulkheads in our life so that we're not doing everything all at once, right? So the thing is, is that with screens, in contrast, everything is always there with us everywhere. Every different notification, every different system, all of the woes of all the world are piped directly into our pockets and into our heads through this same screen. We're doing all of our work through the same device, with the same motions, the same user interfaces. And it blurs all those boundaries, so we're having to deal with it all the time. So what does that, so what is, we're not what does that, do, that. do to you know, somebody's stress level or whatever? And I'll, I'll give you an example. I guess you know, I've noticed in recent years, um, and I, I'll go back 10 or 20 years, right? So you're in line at, at the Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. and everybody is complaining because the line is taking mm -hmm. 30 to 45 minutes, right? I hear nobody complaining about right. standing in line for 30 or 45 minutes anymore or at the grocery store or wherever, because now everybody uses that time on their devices to get caught up on, on whatever they're doing, right? Mm. But you're saying this isn't really such a good thing. Mm -hmm. Not really, no. Like in that particular instance, when you're standing in line, and this is something that is older than just you know a few generations, we tend to have an atrophied sense of ability to maintain our own sense of presence, our own patience is another way of putting it, right? Back during the mid-1900s, it started a little bit earlier than that, but it really made the shift in the mid-1900s, we started outsourcing our attention spans. It really became huge in the 80s with the advent of uh, the new commercialization of, techno of um, commercials and with cable television. Specifically, I, I traced a lot of it back actually to uh, when we started doing uh, VCR recordings of television, when you got the, uh, the, the recordings, because then your commercials could be skipped. You could fast forward through them. And so they had to go into this whole thing right. to try and keep your attention. And so they invented this entire method of cinematography and cuts and shots in order to grab our attention. And that migrated into music videos with MTV, and that migrated into regular um, film and television, which would be a huge difference in just the style of filmography before and after that period. And so before that point, older books, older movies, older things like that, 
the expectation was that we had the ability to maintain our own sense of presence and attention span. Nowadays, we outsource that. So if something is boring, we blame the thing, not ourselves. Interesting. Right? Yes. And so we complain about that. This is, this is, this is something that's being inflicted on me instead of saying this is something that exercises right. my ability to maintain self-control. So we've atrophied this ability. We've societally trained everybody into ADHD. Now, there is, of course, physiological um, genetic components to ADHD, as there is a difference there, but the, the underlying patterns of ADHD behavior are being trained in mass from a very young age just through the use of screens and these kinds of patterns of addictive um, passive reactive. Technology. So what are some of the issues with somebody who's trained, you know, for in to become ADHD? I mean, so, mm. some people are born with this, right? Others, uh, it sounds like are being, we're being trained mm -hmm. to yeah. this. So, uh, is there, is there, are there issues mm -hmm. that, that come up with our young people or with us as adults as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it makes it harder for us to pay attention for longer periods of time, obviously. We get worse at single tasking, like the opposite of multitasking. We have learned really well that in science that we are really bad at multitasking. Uh, it causes all kinds of problems. It causes a huge decrease in our ability to function effectively. Um, it's effectively equivalent to being drunk as far as your effectiveness goes, as if you're multitasking at all. And so if you are happy with everybody, you know, acting as if they're drunk, then that's fine to have everybody multitasking. But single tasking is super critical for everybody to learn how to do. So we're talking to James Ophirion. He is with Catalytic Conversations over in Fargo, North Dakota. And this has been fascinating so far, James. You know, the, the correlation to screen time, to ADHD. Uh, and I, I'm one that used to pride itself on multitasking. I have learned as I've gotten older. Oh, I, I used terrible, to as well. <laughs> terrible thing to afflict onto others. One should be able to stay on task until it's done, so you can go to the next one. Otherwise, you you, you really don't ever have a sense of accomplishment because all you do is have eighteen different tasks pending at any given time. Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to I want to highlight something you just said there. That sense of accomplishment. So. There are three fundamental components to burnout. Now, I like to distinguish burnout from stress. Stress is something that happens to you. It's a normal part of life, such as being bored is a stress that's actually healthy. So we react to being bored by trying to multitask and distract ourselves when really the hard but better path is to double down and be more present and engage with it and exercise that patience. But similarly, burnout is a negative response to stress. They're separate things, right? So what we want to do is convert stress into growth. Like when you're exercising, you're stressing your body in order to get stronger. Similarly, emotional stress, mental stress, financial stress, all these different kinds of things are ways that we actually put ourselves into an opportunity for growth. Burnout is when we don't do that. <laughs> burnout is when we are not converting our stress into growth. But there's three main components to that burnout. And one of them happens to be a lack of sense of meaningful accomplishment. Also known and as imposter. Say that again. Imposter also known as syndrome. imposter syndrome. Okay. Okay. Interesting. It's part of burnout. Yeah. There's other sources for it, but that's one of the, I believe, one of the primary sources of, of imposter syndrome in today's world is actually burnout. So the three components is yep. overwhelm. We're all familiar with that. Feeling we're behind on everything is that. Feeling we're behind on everything is just too much on our plate. Always behind the ball. Procrastination is like, ah. A looming sense of dread and doom of deadlines encroaching, all of that kind of stuff, which tends to actually result from a lack of clarity about what's next and how to prioritize what's important to us. Because we can't actually do everything. That's, that's yes. a normal state of affairs. There's an infinite number of things that could be done. And the fact that we're mortal and a limited number of hours in a day means that we can't. And we're speaking with James Ophiron with uh, Catalytic Conversations. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty, but it's been uh, interesting talking to him so far. Hopefully he'll join us here in just a second. Uh, but the ADHD uh, scenario because of 
The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 1270. Minute of the Tech Ranch as we explore the cutting edge of tech with Marlo and Steve. For more exclusive content, visit thetechranch.com. This is with catalytic conversations out of Fargo, North Dakota. One of my favorite towns, by the way, Mine James. Mine too as well. Yeah, I suppose because you live Well, because there. I moved here on purpose. <laughs> so so where are you from originally? Washington State, yeah. I've lived in Washington. What part of Washington? Over on the west side. Uh, I grew up down in Vancouver area, right across from Portland. Yeah. Uh, then I lived in Tennessee, lived in Texas. I was in Ireland for a few years. And I was back in Washington, about halfway between Olympia and the ocean. Met my wife, and then we decided we didn't like it there anymore. Or they tried to kill us. We got mold allergies, which Western Washington, not so good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah no, no good. So, yeah. having lived in Portland <laughs> on several occasions, I yeah, mopping the windows, we'll, we'll mushrooms that, yeah. growing yeah. on the windowsill, all kinds of craziness. Yeah, so, yeah, we don't have as much of that going no, on around no, it's here. Much nicer yeah. around here. Our health has much improved since we yeah. moved. Yeah, we did a bunch of research. Yeah. Didn't want good. We didn't want to go to the coast. Didn't go to the south because that was too hot. So we did bucket, you know, spreadsheets in all different states in the Midwest and Fargo won. So love it. I'm glad to hear that uh, that you're here, and and that's oh, yeah. fantastic. So, we we were uh, kind of getting into the the yes. burnout scenario, ADHDs, and that type of thing. So, you you go ahead and continue on uh, where where we kind of left. Yeah, off. Was, one of the things that you had brought up was how when working digitally, oftentimes it can be challenging to have a sense of accomplishment. And I was looping that into one of the components of burnout because there's three main components to burnout. You've got the overwhelm that we're all familiar with. You know, feeling like we're behind on everything. And then you've got the alienation, which is actually a kind of sense of this uh, connection with people or dehumanization of people around you, which makes us more irritable. It's easy for us to be annoyed by people. So if somebody's suddenly like, why is everybody so annoying all of a sudden? Like, well, it might not be them. And maybe you, you might just be burned out. <laughs> and then the... Uh, Wow. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. No, nope. we, we are literally looking yeah. at each other across the computer screen right now. This is a really common <laughs> symptom. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and then the third component uh, is inefficacy, which is a lack of a sense of meaningful accomplishment, which often manifests as imposter syndrome, where we don't connect to the work that we're doing effectively. Uh, and that can stem from a wide array of things. It can be a actual a secondary symptom of the alienation that I was talking about, because what really is meaningful to us often is connection and people validating what we're doing. So if we don't have that, then we often end up with imposter syndrome as well. But uh, uh, so, yeah. so do you think that a lot of that, James, is is the the fact that, you know, the things that we make nowadays is the different than what we used to make in the mm. past. I mean, we're not making widgets. A lot of us aren't making widgets anymore. You can't even see what mm -hmm. you make. It's in this digital mm -hmm. space, right? Mm -hmm. There's no piece of paper from, uh, you know, a document you created because you're not, you're not feeling mm -hmm. it. I mean, I always, as when something came off the printer in the past, I always got excited <laughs> about that actually. Oh, you have no and, idea. You know, when I'm like, so recently really? I went to, uh, it was last year, I went to the first time and then I'm going to it again uh, this Saturday, actually, to a blacksmithing workshop. And so the first time I actually forged something out of raw metal into a shape of my devising, right? And I just, you know, beat it into the shape that I was looking for, made something that wasn't there before. That I, re I sat there and I realized that I had spent my life, I, I you know, wrote stories, I, I've, I've written books, uh, not all published. Um, but there's a huge amount of sense of satisfaction from having written a book, right? Um, printing things off. Uh, I used to do beading, so I'm assembling things when I was growing up, one of my hobbies. Uh, I create communities. I tell stories. I make websites. I've done all these different things. But i never taken raw material and made a thing, like an actual, honest to God, thing. And it was so fundamentally different that I realized that this created a sense of satisfaction I had never tasted before. I had never experienced that before in my entire life. It's astonishingly different. So I wonder if if the rise of like maker spaces mm. and all of that is a reflection of of what you just hundred uh, percent described to us. Yeah, there's a, there's a deep uh, need I think for us as embodied people who have who are physical to engage physically uh, with things uh, and with people. 
uh, one of the things that comes into play with the alienation aspect and one of the problems with so much of our relationships being mediated through screens is that it's kind of like a narrowed bandwidth. Like we're trying to drink an ocean through a straw. All of the nuances and subtleties and you know the raw presence of a person is diminished uh, through a screen. And oftentimes when you're working with like a hybrid company with some people who are remote, some people are on site, because of that, by default, we end up just expending a minimal effort of connection across the board. And we end up with like a class system by default. That's, these people are just naturally getting more connection just because you happen to be physically present with them. And other people just aren't. You're not actually seeking out to exclude them. They just are left out in the cold by accident, unless you're intentionally working really hard to overcome that disparity, which people typically don't do that by default. We're not particularly good with class systems in general. So it's pretty easy to fall by the wayside if you're not diligent mm -hmm. about what's going on around you. So. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll get a report on my from my phone uh, says you've got so much screen time. How diligent do people need to be about that? How how cognizant of their surroundings and what they're actually doing do people need to to pay attention to? Because I see this pop up and, and for a long time, I never opened it. I was just like, yeah, what, what does that mean? <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I, but and then. COVID hit, and then we were spending more time on Zoom calls and, and online calls, and I started following how much time I was spending on the screen rather than personal interaction, and I'm a big believer that there's a lot of mental health things that uh, we still haven't even oh, yeah. seen come out of COVID, but they kind of go hand in hand with some of the screen they time do. things. They do. And there's a lot, one of the things that we brought up earlier are dealing with kids and how much of their world and when they're in their formative years imprinting on what, how the world works, they're not imprinting on the actual world. They're imprinting on screens and the user interfaces that we're designing and all the algorithms that we're feeding them about how the world works are programmed into something that isn't actually true to how the world works. And that's, we have not seen the end of the impact of that. But what I, one thing I, I try to bring about is that I'm not, I'm not an advocate of that completely you know, banning all technology. I'm obviously using technology here to engage with you gentlemen. Uh, but uh, having a foundation in the physical world that then extends into the technology. Technology should extend our humanity, not replace it. So having an in-person connection, a relationship that established that is established, and then using that to extend and connect further using technology so is better. Do you, do you find that we've turned that 100%. around? So instead of having the, the physical world and being an extension into the digital world, we've reversed that mm -hmm. some somewhere along yep, 100%. the way. Yeah, it started actually way back with the Industrial Revolution. We started interme you know, intermediating a lot of these things that were very human, very traditioned on hand-to-hand -hand relationally in community, and adding ro machines into the mix. And then it was they, they foretold it of the Luddites of old, told us this has happened. It did happen. It took a couple <laughs> hundred years, but it happened. You ended up with us becoming the machines. We are became like replaceable cogs. The machine can just be replaced at will, which we have like the huge churn that we see in today's uh, career and vocational uh, challenges that we're facing, where people are averaging changing their careers every five to six years now, which is ridiculous. C careers used to change every few hundred years, passed down from generation to generation. You're working on multi generational projects. That's unheard of for people nowadays. Well, and it's interesting because there was a paradigm shift because you talk about the careers and I used to be the mayor of Bismarck. One of the things that we had to deal with was workforce mm -hmm. issues. And part of it was there was a paradigm shift. There was never, we've gotten away from, okay, you get a job, it's about the benefits and you're in that position for a long time. You get pocket walk at the end. We've gotten, <laughs> yeah, uh, but we've, we've turned mm -hmm. that around in society to where, I needed to have HR start addressing what some of the benefit packages looked like because people didn't care about the benefits. They cared about, oh, I was going to make another uh, $100 a week in this job, so I'm going to go over there because people would bounce around. It really didn't. What we found was we didn't get people vested mm -hmm. until they were about 12 years in, mm -hmm. 10 to 12 years in, and then they were vested and going, okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. stay here. Yeah, because they've invested that, they've developed relationships, likely is a huge part of that. Because you can't really mechanize relationships. That's the one thing that doesn't really work. Even with AI, 
uh, you can simulate it, but it doesn't click um, like it really should. It, it does not work. And so when you have all of the standardization of what our skill sets are, we become interchangeable. And so it's hard for us to actually connect to things in the mechanical aspects of things. It has to be into the culture. It has to be into the community that's being developed. So James, I want to take this another direction. I have always wanted to know about the impact of notifications. Why <laughs> is it that a 15 year old when the phone dings, or I should say like a 17 year old is a, legally driving, right? Uh, and that phone dings with a notification that they have a text, what compels them to actually put their life on the line to pick up that phone to look at what's going on. I know this one. I know this one. <laughs> Pavlov dog. That's all it is. It's Pavlov's dog. We're wired into is it. That right? Yeah, it's 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 the same type of um, behavioral addiction patterns that you'll see, uh, like with smoke, smoking. Um, smoking is one of the hardest addictions to break, and almost none of that is the chemical component. Uh, the chemicals you can detox from those in a very short period of time, but it's seventy-two yeah, it's, hours. It's, 72 hours, the nicotine's yeah, the out of your behavior system. Behavior patterns of that stick for years and years. And you'll still get a cognitive itch for a, a, a cigarette even three or four years after you've gone completely clean and sober. Similar kind of pr paradigm mm. where you are engaging with these micro hits of dopamine and these behavioral patterns that um, just get ingrained into us. Because one of the challenges with phones, you've noticed this, it ties directly into this, is that phantom phone itch. We'll talk about phantom limb syndrome. Where they get, you know, have like an amputee will still feel like an itching in their leg that's not there anymore. Right. If your phone's in the other room, right. you might still feel like a buzz, like you're getting a notification on your leg, like, like it's in your pocket, even though it's not. It's in the other room. Does this have anything to do with when you always hear the phone ring when you're in the yeah. shower? Yeah. <laughs> that that, that to same do kind that? of phantom phone. Because I still yeah. do that. I yeah, you it's I, so, I, what, different what, ring and, and it's my cell phone, but it, it, you hear that, Marlo? So. Seriously, you're not the only one. You don't hear the phone. You're not the only show. one. Marlo's shaking I, his head. I'm He's shaking my head. But, <laughs> Come on. But I, I will say, though, that there are certain. James knows I know what, what you're talking, talking about. about. What, what? I get these. <laughs> I, but I, I've noticed sometimes, like, when the notification goes off, and maybe this is the dramamine that you're talking about here, or or did you say dramamine? Uh, dramamine? Or, 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 dopamine. <laughs> dopamine. <laughs> dopamine. Dopamine. There we go. <laughs> Two different, totally yeah. different things here, but. Dopamine. So I, I can almost feel like my, my, I don't know. There's just something that goes on in my head. Like I'll be laying there, uh, trying to go to sleep and my phone will ding. And all of a sudden I'm like wide awake again. And does this have, I mean, is, so, or is this what we're yeah, talking what about is, here? Or? Okay, Pavlov. Actually, what, this is what it is. What we're actually it? finding is that our body starts treating the phone like a part of itself. Like it's actually another limb. Like it's a piece of you, it's part of your identity. And so what everything that happens on that phone is happening in you, to you, in a very real sense, which is horrifying when you think about how much crap is on there. All of the woes of the world are all being piped into our identity through this phone. And it's pulling us in all these different directions without our ability to actually really control it, unless we're turning off those notifications. Because we're designed to focus, to single task, to be engaged and focused in a single thing at a given time and be present with it. We're not designed to be pulled all these different directions constantly. And it's incredibly unhealthy. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on in Marlo's head. <laughs> you know, so I am too. How actually. does anybody figure that, that out? That, that's why nobody can. So, uh, yeah. Well, this is, this is so, so going back to, so how, how do we, how do we help ourselves mm. detox from all of this? Practice single tasking, get physical, get engaged, be present with people and things around you. I love body full thought, full type tasks like blacksmithing, uh, dancing. It's also like particularly like uh, ballroom dancing where you're having to maintain a frame with another person. So you're communicating physically. It's really challenging. And it gives us a tremendous amount of exercise in that relational dynamic that we don't get. Sounds online. like another Chair dancing does not count, Marlo. <laughs> <Damn> Chair dancing <laughs> does not count. No, it does not. It does not. Uh, pottery. <laughs> He's a notorious chair dancer. <laughs> I also recommend sword fighting, like fencing, those kinds of things, or other martial arts like jiu-jitsu. Um, 
Uh, pottery is another good one. You're being physically present. You can't be your mind drifting off, wondering what's going on on TikTok or whatever. You have to be physically engaged with your full body in the moment, learning actively present. And that trains your body, exercises the muscle, to help you combat this distraction. The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 1270. Tech Ranch. Let's rejoin Marlo and Steve as they guide us through the fascinating world of technology. So James O'Farron, he's with Catalytic. 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 Cat, catalytic. <laughs> Not catatonic. <laughs> catalytic conversations. So fascinating. Yeah. 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 People don't think about their screen time as much as they should. No. Because like I said, I, I would, I, I, you, here, here's your analysis of your screen time and it'll break down, my phone will break down what, you know, you're on this, you're yeah. on this, you're on texting, you're on social media, you're on, which I try to be uh, not on so, anymore. So do you look at that a lot? Do you look I at do that now. Else? Okay. I, I do now. And, and. I get a thing I, every week that says I was on it less or more than the week before. Right. And so I, I, but I've I, never clicked on it to see. I what, try to make sure I'm on less and less and less. Okay. I, I, I go out of my way unless, uh, if I'm traveling, I tend to be on the phone a lot for business because I'm multitasking. But you know, like right now, so I have my phone open in front of me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not communicating. I'm just using it for research. You know, because you, if you and I say something, and I want to, I want to make sure I say something correct. My guess is because I have it lit up and ready to go, that it's counting towards my time, right? Even Probably. though I'm not even it's screen time. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not even looking at it. I'm just looking at you right now. But I have it on the ready to go. In case you see it, you, you say something. You're not looking at cat videos. Not looking at cat okay. videos. Here, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> I believe you. No I, I, cat no videos. No cat videos. Although, watching them ride around on Roombas is funny. Okay. <laughs> I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the local cat to jump on my lawnmower. Really? By the way, yeah. I just Your can't badger? To, yeah, my badger. Your badger? Yeah. I wonder, I, wonder if the, I wonder who will win, the cat or the badger. You know, I bet a dog could actually ride on a yard the dogs are on a yard the dogs are afraid of the badger right now in our neighborhood dogs they see that thing come out and they they go well the one across the street goes a little crazy don't yet. mess with a badger that's right badgers are mean that's exactly right but anyway back to james <laughs> speaking of adhd Girl. <laughs> so you know at one time and not too long ago our attention span had the average attention span was the length of time between commercials on television. That's what we had decreased to, which was a which is about twelve minutes. But I'm gonna Mine's tell you right now still around that because my wife hates watching TV with me because as soon as a commercial comes on, right, I'm changing the channel. Right. I'm gonna tell you right now that our attention span, I don't even know what it is, but I guarantee you it's less than that over as as a population because So what is the attention span of a gnat? That's a good no. question, because when we get bored, no. we're moving on. So Does and that happen? And, and you have you know, and I know we're going to get it. We're really going to get into TikTok here in a little bit, but yeah. You know, but even if it's something that I'm TikTok is not one bored videos. with, it commercials pop up, gone, done. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm but, watching. But TV. you're but you're watching you're watching these videos, and then when the video, you know. On, on TikTok, you know, it was like a, a minute when it first started. Now, if you're, I think if you're a premier TikTok uh, creator or something, you get longer videos. But I find myself, even if they go longer than a minute, if I'm watching a TikTok video, I start to lose interest after a couple of minutes. Yeah, but even beyond that, and this goes back a long time, think about, you know, I come up in the music industry, right? So, and I've said this forever, it, go back to the 70s. You want a hit song? Two, two and a half minutes. Right. That that's it. That because a there's not enough of it there for people to figure out why they like it or why they dislike it. So they'll listen to it a lot, and it's short, so they have to listen to it a right. lot. It just it, it's that little window. If you wanted a hit song back in the seventies and eighties, make it short. It it it. Every time you go well, back and look at one hit wonders and they're short songs. mostly. But that's generally how it is today too, isn't it? Well, but now it's with videos, right? Right. That's true. So, so if you do a five minute video, what's the attention span? 
if you do a 30 second video, then you're probably going to have more people hit. Right. Yeah. I, I, but obviously the whole industry, I mean, in our entertainment industry, social media, whatever has created a population of ADHD clickbait. We're all clickbait. So, you know, whether, whether you like it or not, I think James makes some good points to, you know, turn the stuff off. He's got this 2020 rule where every 20, 20 minutes look away from your, from your computer for 20 seconds, which I thought was interesting. You know, I, I, I would have, I actually expected him to say longer than that when he told me about this 2020 rule that he uses, but it's just a matter to break the focus. I mean, you, you get caught up and I've done this many times. I get caught up into a project. And it'll be two, three, four hours a lot of times, you know, working on a document or whatever before I look up from the screen. I may have been distracted a hundred thousand times in that period, you know, with the different. Oh, what's Astro right, doing now? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. But I haven't looked away from my screen, you know, so he's saying that after 20 minutes, you should look away from your screen for even 20 seconds. But there's two parts of that. There's the mental health side of things. And that's what James really touches on. But there's also the physical health side of things. After 20 minutes, whether you're on a screen or whether you're at a desk, you should get up anyway. You should. You should. There, there's a mental health side and a physical health side. After t- I like the 2020 rule, but expand that a little bit. Get up away from. Don't look away from your screen or right. from what you're doing. Just get up. It, it go walk to. Well, a lot of people working from home now. Walk to the kitchen. Yeah. Walk to. Somewhere, just get up and move around a little bit. Go because, get the mail. Yeah, there's the, the physical the side out. of things besides the mental health side of Pick things. Pick a blade of grass. At the end of the day, if you do that 10 times, you have 10 blades of grass picked that you don't have to mow later. Actually, one of my... Okay. <laughs> we weed the neighborhoods of dandelions. Uh, yes, and, and I've got work. a tool for that. Yeah. And I can spend hours going through the neighbor's yard because I don't have dandelions really. Uh, because I do this, if I need to go focus or lose myself for a little bit to, to just check out in the summer, I can go pick dandelions with my little dandelion tool picker thing for hours. Wow. Hours. Just crawl around on the lawn and pick it in and pop it out. and It's, kind of, it's soothing. There's something soothing. You know what's even more it's soothing? It's my fidget spinner, I guess. Watching my badger mow my yard, uh-huh. that's more soothing, soothing to me. I was going to say uh, probably watching your grass grow. <laughs> that that could be soothing as well. Well, you know, I'm not going to get a chance to do that much anymore because it's badgers. Badger can, we should run a contest. What should I name the badger? I Actually, like the badger. badger's not bad, yeah, is it? Yeah, the badger's good. We'll, well name my Yarbo. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, because Yarbo's... When, when the Yarbo uh, comes in. Yeah, yeah we'll you need, name the you Yarbo. need to have a nickname. Yeah, for Badger's Yarbo. like... Uh, Badger. Yeah. Don't screw with a Badger. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a great name we'll for name more. The, name the Yarbo. Yarbo should have a name. Yeah. Well, think about it. When it shows up, which hopefully will be soon for you. Really? Because I know you can't wait to get I, I can't. Yarbo. So what... Is it is the first function going to be to clear the yard of leaves? Is that what you're going to do with your yard bowl? Well, or if I don't it get just... it till the fall. Okay. Actually, I've got a cottonwood tree in my front yard, and we used to have three. And every time the wind blows, little sticks break off oh, yeah. from cottonwood trees. Yeah. So, yarbo, go yeah. clear the sticks yeah. from the cottonwood tree because the wind blew. There you go. You you actually expect that you're going to talk to this thing as well? I won't be able to. I don't know. I don't think so. Really? I think you just run it from your from an app on your phone. Asteroids got her well, Astro's got well, me spoiled. Yeah, as, Astroid. Astro, you got me calling <laughs> Asteroid now too. <laughs> Astro the Asteroid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll be able to. Uh, uh, hopefully, you can talk to it. I don't know. We'll find out. If you have any questions or want to suggest topics for future shows, visit thetechranch.com and send us your thoughts. You can also listen to past episodes and watch exclusive interviews not featured on the radio show. Be sure to follow Marlo and Steve on social media by clicking the links at thetechranch.com. Until next time, keep exploring the world of living with technology. The Tech Ranch. X 
AM, Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square media station, broadcasting from the VIEW Community Credit Union Studio. Here's the latest from ABC News. I'm Dave Packard. Preparations are underway in Miami this weekend for Tuesday's high-stakes appearance of former President Trump for his second indictment this year. And it could just be the start of his legal troubles. ABC's Aaron Katursky is outside the Miami courthouse. Between the two indictments in New York and here in Florida, the former president faces 71 felony counts. Trial is already scheduled in New York in the hush money case for March, right in the heart of primary season. And the former president faces the prospect of two more indictments, one from the same special counsel over January 6th and the other from f prosecutors in Atlanta over election tampering. Now, despite Thursday's indictment, the former president is hitting the campaign trail once again this weekend. Speaking at the Georgia State Republican Convention today, its first appearance since the indictment's release. There are plenty of supporters on hand like this Georgia native. Trump's great. He's been great for the country. If people would wake up and smell the roses. Meanwhile, President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden today hosting the White House Pride celebration on the South Lawn. The First Lady. Today, we say loud and clear that you belong that you are beautiful, that you are loved. That's the miracle that carry us, carries us through the darkest times. The Unabomber found dead in his prison cell this morning. Ted Kaczynski terrorizing the nation with mail bombs. Ted Kaczynski's crudely made devices became more sophisticated over the 17 years that the man who became known as the Unabomber targeted universities, airlines, and advertising executives. He killed three people and injured nearly two dozen others. Authorities eventually tracing Kaczynski down to a primitive Montana cabin after his manifest was made public and Kaczynski's own brother recognized his writings and alerted the FBI. Michelle Franz in ABC News. Ted Kaczynski was 81. You're listening to ABC News. Super Talk 1270, Bismarck Area Weather. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, mostly sunny, a bit breezy, highs in the mid-70s. Breezy tonight, mostly clear, 49. Sunshine, 76 for your Sunday. For Sunday night, mostly clear, a low around 51. Sunshine Monday, a high near 81. For Tuesday, sunny with a high near 86. Try Grandpa's Barbecue Sauce, made from an original family recipe. Get it at grandpasbbqshop.com. Currently, 69 degrees. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. Save by the scan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. News, talk, and sports for Bismarck Mandan. Super Talk 1270. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Welcome to the Tech Ranch, where we explore the world of living with technology. Get ready to take a deep dive into the latest gadgets, apps, and innovations with your hosts, the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson, and his trusty co-host, Steve Botkin. Join us on this exciting journey, and don't forget to visit thetechranch.com for even more exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marlo and Steve to the Tech Ranch. I kind of think more of the 60 minutes of the tick, oh. tick, 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 Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that one, I gravitate towards that yeah. a little bit more when I'm thinking TikTok. But you're on TikTok, and I'm not on TikTok. You know, the first time I heard TikTok, I thought it was some type of Bach app. I don't think I'm the only one that way, too. I mean, until you, until you get in there and find out that it's just, you know, it's videos. But Dickery, dickery, doc. That's what I yeah. think of. Yeah. So it's interesting you know, even even the the uh, name of the app, uh, but it has it has catapulted into one of the most popular apps of all time. Oh, it's huge! Yeah, absolutely huge. Yeah, and I mean, so but much. The question so, is why? That it is interesting. It uh, you know, I think even Facebook is you know feeling threatened by TikTok. They have for a while already, and and generally speaking, I mean, you hear about that TikTok is dying off, but TikTok is still king. It's just that people don't spend as much time on, or excuse me, that Facebook is king. 
Uh, but they don't spend as much time on Facebook now like they used to because of diversions like Well, think TikTok about market and, share. It's, it's just cutting into Facebook's market share. Right. So, But the users really haven't declined a whole lot on Facebook. They just don't spend as much time on Facebook. And, well, and I Facebook, see that myself. You know, so Facebook, here's the thing with all these social media apps is, hey, here's a cool new social media app. They'll buy it. You know, yep. so... Instagram, the Twitter, yep. or it, it's a, a Facebook thing, not TikTok. TikTok's right. different. Yeah, TikTok is different. It's not one you're going to buy because of the ownership. So that that's that's the problem, and and you know you get into you no. Know, so Montana now has banned TikTok. TikTok gets to find ten thousand dollars a day if it finds out about any instances of the app being able to be downloaded by anybody in Montana. So Governor Dutton got rid of TikTok? Wrong governor. Taking him to the train station? Wrong governor. Oh, okay. It's not Yellowstone. Oh, okay. Yeah, governor... It's in Montana, though. It's close Governor enough. Montana, yeah. Um, so I have Tester on my, on my list here. So John Tester is the uh, senator, Democratic senator from Montana, who has reversed his um, support of the ban and said that Montana shouldn't have banned the silly TikTok, TikTok app. We'll get into that a little bit, too. Um, but the governor, uh, Greg Glanfort. Had, Gianfort, uh, yeah. Gianfort, I'm sorry. Yeah, Gianfort. Yep, yep, thank you. Uh, had had uh, signed this into, into law, $10,000 per day for each time someone is offered the ability to access the social media platform or download the app. So, How do you police that? I don't know. But I'm guessing that they probably are trying. You know, there's probably some people in the office of the governor that that maybe attempts. righteous bucks that'll balance a budget in a hurry. Yeah, ten grand a day. Oh my goodness, well, per user. The ten grand per user for each time someone is offered the ability. Okay, yeah, that yeah. could that could that could add up. It could be millions of dollars yep. a day. The penalties would not apply to users. So if you actually go ahead and download the app because you have the access to it, you are not the one that's going to get fined. TikTok is the one that's getting fined because they they allowed that to happen. So so it's interesting, and you know they they claim, and I know that. Let's see if I can find what the attorney general basically said. But this whole thing started because of the weather balloon, right? that China deployed over the United States a few months ago. And one of the weather balloons. Right, right. And it had gone over Montana. And Do I get to put my tinfoil hat on now? Yeah, you can. Cool. And Montana, <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were a, a citizen of Montana reported this balloon. They were not alerted by federal authorities. So the some of the governing... You know, elected officials were a little dismayed by the fact that the federal government had not told them about this balloon because it came in through Alaska, of course, crossed Canada, and then came into Montana. And the thing was actually flying. It had maneuverability. I, I would imagine, I don't know how much maneuverability a, a, a weather balloon or a hot, I guess it's not a hot air balloon, or was it a hot air balloon? Not that I know of. Okay. Just like a weather helium balloon, yeah. or whatever had some maneuverability to it, but I would imagine for the most part you're you're at the mercy of the jet you streams, are, the, but whatever but, the weather but you, conditions you can are. there are things you can do to maneuver a balloon a little bit, right? Right. So, but it was going over you know air air bases and and things like this, secured facilities, or or you know should have been. Secured, well, if you, if you think about putting it up and being able to calculate where the jet stream is there there had to be some sort of a naming mechanism to get over the facilities they wanted to right, look at right. so you know, it wasn't like let it go and see where kind of like in world war 2 japan was launching balloons that actually made it to the west coast right. with with ordnance bombs on right. them because they were going to oh we'll firebomb the yep. the west coast of the united yep. states with balloons it didn't work fortunately but they tried it yep so anyway, they were a little dismayed by this. So then they started looking into, you know, what's going on here. And for whatever reason, they set their sights on TikTok and started to dig into TikTok a little bit more. 
found out that that all the information uh, that is going into TikTok goes to a company called Byte. Book is called Byte. There's another. There's another syllable there. I'm just thinking Byte Squad. I'm yeah, thinking. that's not it. Now I'm hungry. Um, Thanks. And, oh, you're very welcome. And uh, I'll, I'll think of the, the rest of the name of that in a little bit. But anyway, it goes to this company that's based in in China. And China, all they have to do is order the company to turn over its database, and they have to do that. So they have found that you know Facebook has biometrics, has all your photos, and and because uh, it has access, you know, when you put TikTok on your phone. It asks you for your contact list, your images, your videos, uh, and a lot of other stuff. It well, that's also part of the problem a, that makes TikTok a little different yeah. is that you can't shut anything off, any you, of the permissions. If, if you want to use the app. If you want to use right, the app. It has key have, logging built into it. And this is, to me, where it gets scary. That's the scary part. Is the key logging thing because when when they're able to 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 actually keep track of what you're typing into your phone, and then they can look back at it later and say, oh, look at that. Steve went to his bank, and here's his username and password. As long as the app is active on the phone, which, you know, a lot of people just minimalize their apps. So as long as it's active, it has the ability to, to key log. That's a really scary thing. And then, then they actually came out, the Attorney General stated that they, they have, they've known instances where they were, because of TikTok, they've used that information to track American journalists. And now you start really thinking about what is going on here. For me, it's the layers. You start putting all the pieces together, and, and this is the tinfoil hat side, but you take a look at China, and Chinese government is cutting edge when it comes to facial recognition software. Uh, they just do it better than it. they can find anybody in a crowd. That's and correct. They got a lot of crowds. That's and correct. Because there's cameras everywhere, and they've got the software that'll facial recognize somebody. You know, it's like, boom, where's where's Bob? Yep. Uh, Bob's over there because his picture just popped up, and the camera recognized him. It, yep. It's crazy how far ahead they are of everybody else. Now, when you start putting in that with the other pieces, it's kind of the sum of the parts, and then it starts getting really scary because now they can track where you are. They can track uh, your surroundings. Uh, every time you take a picture or a video, everything's there. You're up fishing uh, at the tail race of Garrison Dam. And, gee, here's the dam in the background. Or, you know, one of the things I used to do growing up in Grand Forks is we used to go out to the Grand Forks Air Force Base and watch the – B-52 bombers come out because they came in low across Highway right, 2. Right. Well, if you were doing that, and then they shut down the parking in front of the air base. Uh, but if you were going to do that now, of course you're going to take a picture or a video yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, okay, here's a video that now a potential adversary has of our our bomber fleet. I mean, when you really think about it, and by the way, we're going to get back to social social uh, what I call social credit and facial recognition in China. We have to talk about this today, too, but we'll do this after we talk about TikTok. They kind of blended a little bit here. But uh, um, why, why, does it, why do the Chinese not have to put satellites in space anymore to spy on us? Because we spy on ourselves. <laughs> we allow these apps to come in. So you think about this, right? Let's, let's see. Should the Chinese governor, government spend 10 or $100 billion U.S. dollar equivalent to a space program, which, I mean, they have a space program and they do this stuff, but should they spend $100 billion a year launching three or four or five satellites into space? Or should we spend a billion dollars, build this kick-ass app, right, that the world's going to use, and we'll use that to spy on everybody? Yeah, and they'll do it for us. And they'll do it for us. You know, it's funny, though, you mentioned the Chinese space program because they have space station and they just put a bunch of Chinese up in their space station right, right. this week. Right. So, it, it, but the difference is when the world or the U.S. talk about space, even the Russians are more forthcoming. The Chinese space program, very secretive. Yeah. 
Kind of like when they did that flyby on the dark side of the moon. Yep. Are they going to find Decepticons or right. are they going to find the Chinese? Right. Maybe some of both. Maybe both? Just together? saying. You yeah. never know. Possible. Never know. So, yeah, I think, you know, TikTok versus Montana is going to get very interesting. TikTok claims that Montana's ban is unlawful because it violates the plaintiff's free speech, is preempted by federal law violates the Commerce Clause and singles the company out for harsh penalties based on speculative concerns about TikTok's data security and content moderation practices. So this is what TikTok's, they're, they're, they're going to fight this. You just said a mouthful. I know. Well, there's two parts of the company, and uh, when we come back, I, I think we should talk about the fight different dance. Pieces, fight dance, yes. Uh, there's the U.S. side, and there's the Chinese side. Yes. And, and, uh, the Tech Ranch. Tech Ranch. Let's rejoin Marlo and Steve as they guide us through the fascinating world of technology. So, how far do you think this is going to go, Steve, with TikTok as far as the court case goes? I'm just kind of curious because, well, there's two sides of this. So, there's the U.S. based company, which is the, the little brother of the Chinese based company. Right. Which I think most people realize that after they were under attack the first time, they came back and said, all right, we'll, We'll set up this US, uh, USA right. side. We'll put our servers there. We'll do all of this stuff to make it look like, or, or you know, to give the appearance anyway that we have a US side. And they convinced enough government officials that this is where TikTok is going to house oh, all of their stuff. Oh, nothing to hide here. Right. We're all good. Right. Um, I think what it's weird because if you, if you step back and look at what's going on in Montana with the Montana. Um, court case and it's going to go to the supreme court I, I have no doubts about that and i'm like why is this coming from a state not from the federal level and i think the feds are just sitting back and letting it test the waters before they step in and make a determination or do something different or whatever that looks like i i, I it is going to get to the supreme court though i i, ju I just have that feeling and it, it just it smells like a supreme court case do you think that other states are going to join in on this? You know, we, we border them. We're in North Dakota ourselves. You I and don't I. know. Um, because if, if you look at, we're going to ban an app. We're going to ban a very popular app. That's some, that's some shaky ground. It's some gray area. It's uh, you're, you're potentially treading in quicksand. Uh, I don't know if you're going to see a bunch of states hop on board because I think they want to see what happens. Because a case like this is also very expensive. And I wonder, you know, and there's there's a couple things that we haven't really talked about yet. This has an impact on a lot of businesses. So there's 200,000 people that use TikTok in Montana. I I for life, we can't remember how many people live in Montana. I think it's like 1.2 million, right? I think. I uh, won't we'll look that up. But less people than elk. But yeah. yes, yes, for a lot less than yeah. elk. Uh, and then there's there's 6,000 businesses that use TikTok, and they use it in a way that promotes their business. It's advertising. It's Bob's Donut Shop showing off his donuts that he made today for because it's the first day of spring or something. Or right? Bear Scat with the new. Donut for, for the for Larks. Larks. Yes, yeah. exactly. Same, yeah. Businesses use this, and it's a way for them to get their stuff out there. And some businesses are very, very good at it, and they actually depend on the income that these videos produce to drive significant revenue to keep their doors open, all right? And then there's the influencer part of it as well. Okay, that's not a job. I know, but people do make money I'm an influencer it. of what? But if they, if they, if they make if they're making a living and all of a sudden the government comes along and says, Hey, you can't use TikTok anymore. What? I mean, it would, it would be like them coming, the government coming in and saying, Hey, Steve and Marlo, you guys can't do the tech ranch anymore because we don't agree with your business practices or whatever, you know? So, well, that's where it's shaky. And I, this I is think where that, the court case really yeah. is going to get interesting. There's going to be a lot of States that don't hop onto it because of that. Yeah. It, it's, it's going to be protracted. They're like, okay, let let Montana navigate these waters first, and, and then I think it'll go to the federal level. I, I'm not seeing a big 
a big onboarding from outside states okay. hopping on a class action lawsuit. I just don't in this case. But it is interesting. I'm going to read this again because, like you said, it was a mouthful. In its lawsuit, TikTok claims that Montana's ban is unlawful because it violates the plaintiff's free speech. So I will say that's probably true, right? But is it is it the plaintiff's free speech? So the plaintiff is TikTok. Is it their free speech or is it the free speech of the users? Yeah, that's an interesting, probably both. Is preempted by federal law. Violates the Commerce Clause and singles the company out for harsh penalties based on speculative concerns about TikTok's data security and content moderation practices. So, based on speculative concerns. So, they're, they're basically saying that we don't know. Montana is saying that we don't know what you're doing with your data. We think this is what you're doing with it. Or that China has access to ByteDance's you know, stuff so they can utilize this stuff anytime they want to. But the TikTok saying that's not the case. Now course. here's an so. interesting point. So if you're going to have a lawsuit, usually there's some sort of damages that are being claimed. I, I'm being damaged yep. financially. I'm being damaged. Yep. If the intent of TikTok is to gather intelligence, gra- gather information from the users for the Chinese state, like, Montana's claiming, and a lot of people are, are on board with that, then is there a financial loss that could be attached to a lawsuit because that's not the intent of what the app is there for? I find it interesting. It's that a lot of legalese, but... I wonder if TikTok's going to sue for monetary loss. Is that where you're going? Yeah. So if they if they don't attach a monetary number to it, if they're just suing so that they can continue to do business in Montana, I'm just using this as a what mm-hmm. if, right? That might speak volumes. Oh, I think it would. Because that would tell you then that TikTok is more interested in the data it's collecting right. than in financial uh, gain. And it reveals what the intent of the app truly is. Yeah. Is, is it there for monetary yep. gain? No. Now, granted, if they came in and said, hey, we want $100 million or whatever because you're you're hurting our business this much, they could do that and still, you know, be hiding behind that. But if, they, if they're not smart enough to do that and just say we're just suing for the rights to be, you know, doing business in your state, right. then 100% it's about the data that they're collecting. So I suppose TikTok's listening to our analogy right now. And Probably. Saying, they're, yeah, they're figuring need, it out. Oh, yeah. We need, to put, we need to sue them for a billion dollars. You know, the other side of that, too, is you, you take a look at all the proprietary. Uh, there's a lot of rules in place when it comes to social media on because they're all about gathering information. And there has been a lot of inroads on what can be gathered, how that could be used. Um, you know, it, that goes into the algorithms. So what's the feedback from an algorithmic perspective with the data? I, I, I haven't seen that. So, for example, if you're on Facebook and you click on uh, Kitty on a Roomba, um, and it's going to know that you like Kitty videos on vacuum cleaners. Right. And it's going to start feeding your feed those videos. TikTok does the same thing. But is the intent the same? Yeah, that's a, that's that, a good that, question. That's my question. Is the intent the yeah, same? You know, I, I love the DIY videos that I get on TikTok. You know, and especially like the woodworking ones. I'm just fascinated by how people can, you know, plain wood and make tables from it and the different ways that they can you know, finish a table. I don't know. To me, it's just fascinating. But uh, um, it, it is, uh, I get fed that. But I also get fed other things in there, too. And I don't know. Are if, you aware of what you're being fed, though? That's well, that's well, kind of my question, because with other they, social media, you are. Are they training you in such a way? Because other social media is claimed by that, too, you know. So just saying. 
Well, it's so an yeah. interesting perspective. It is. The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 127. Technology comes alive. Let's dive back into the conversation with Marlo and Steve. And don't forget to check out thetechranch.com for more. All right. We have been we've been on our high horse about TikTok. It's time to maybe move to a little different thing. But we'll you keep... have this grin that's kind of I I'm, I'm you're thinking about something. I can tell. Well, just this next topic, which isn't the ex- most ex- it's exciting to talk about, but it's scary. I'm just telling you. But the uh, but we'll keep track. We're gonna watch TikTok versus Montana, and because uh, this has so many ramifications for probably many companies that have apps and things online because probably to me the the scariest thing about TikTok losing is that who's next you know just and, and you and I touched briefly on this on Tech Tuesday and and you talked about this i mean if you if your government in your state isn't aligned with a particular view about an app does that mean that they can just take that app down now too? There's people that say that about Twitter. Yes, that's correct. So uh, let me put a different twist on it. Okay. So I kind of look at when you're looking at the social media stuff, who's next? Because the pathway in the past has been, okay, you've got the big two or three, and then they gobble up the little guy as they get successful and then somebody else comes up, and then they gobble that up as they get successful and popular and not with TikTok. So if TikTok goes away, what's going to take its place? Who's next? Is, so there's that is too. Facebook going to roll something out? Is, is Google, is, are the Chinese going to bring another platform? What's next? Well, that, and the other thing that's interesting, there, there's so many so many facets to to this thing with TikTok that uh you know you could make the argument because Facebook and um Twitter LinkedIn I think was in there as well they've all been uh going along with the US government side of banning TikTok on many of their devices and things like that stating that it's a security breach po- possibility because of TikTok well, why do you think Facebook's interested in getting rid of TikTok in the United States? Competition. Bingo. Market share. It's yes. all about market share. You know, they've watched, Facebook's watched their, you know, hour and two minutes per user per day go down to 38 minutes. And they've watched TikTok go from one minute a day to two hours and 48 minutes. They know that their audience share, especially the younger audience, has moved over to TikTok. So if TikTok's gone, will they get some of that back? Well, of course they will. And they know this. So the interesting point is what happens if the government goes, oh, well, people are taking a lot of pictures uh, near air bases or military installations or, and they're posting them on Snapchat. Uh, do you get are they next? Snapchat? Are yeah. you, is Snapchat next? Yeah. Is Instagram next? Yeah. It, it, it is a slippery slope when you start looking at the First Amendment side of this. But there are security, legitimate security concerns when it comes with TikTok. Yep. So it's going to be an interesting court case. It's going to be and very, going very to be a lot to navigate. And, and it's going to actually shape where social media goes over the next five years. Yep. All right. So we'll watch this, everybody, and we'll keep reporting on it. It's a fascinating topic that will have significant you know, ramifications, I think, for businesses and everything across the country as we move forward. So, all right. China. Now we get to watch smiling Chinese faces. So this is so interesting to me. So are you familiar with, uh, have you watched the Orville? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So there was an episode in the first season where the Orville visits a planet so for for everybody who has never watched this, I, I shouldn't make the assumption everybody knows what this show is. It's it's a lot of Star Trek fans say that the Orville is what Star Trek should be. It really was. I mean, it was it's it's this crew that uh, some of them drink and and I mean, there's a, there's fun that goes on. Oh, come in there. on, like Kirk didn't wor- well, womanize. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, 
You know, it, they it, had Romulan brandy. Come on, that's true. That's true. But it's one of these. It's one of these shows. But they get into these these situations. And one of the situations, they go on this planet, and they have their away team that goes to this planet. And just as a joke, one of the crew members starts kind of doing a dirty dance with this statue. And uh, um, and everybody who's on this planet has this kind of badge. And in this badge is a camera. And somebody recorded this going on. And then you can, and it, in the beginning of this, you can see, oh, it was such a pleasure to visit with you on this elevator. And then they would push push the green button on the on the badge, right? So you're getting this positive reinforcement. Oh, it was so great to visit with you, Steve, today. The, the meal was fantastic, right? But if you do something that irritates somebody, they can push the red button. And if you get enough of these red things pushed, you start losing your ability in, in social credit to do things, right? You can't eat at a particular restaurant because you have a social, you have 500,000 dislikes on your badge, right? And this goes with you. So anyway, he does this dirty dancing thing on there and they had to pretend that they actually were residents of this, of this planet. So they had these things on there and all of a sudden he's on, he has to go on the talk show circuit so that he doesn't get the 10 million of dislikes where then they would, he would actually be like lobotomized <laughs> to be, it's just this crazy scenario. Well, this is what's going on. Now, I don't know about the lobotomized part of it or, or reprogramming of your brain, but in China, they have a social credit program and it's based on facial recognition. Okay. And if you jaywalk, then a point gets taken off of who you are. And there are people in China that have had enough points taken off for doing what doesn't seem to be... You have to go to retraining. That you can't buy a house or a car and credit or any of this stuff. Well, they say this a lot... This is happening already. Uh, take a look at ESG, uh, yeah. Environmental Social Governance. Yeah. Um, there is a movement with ESG to replace credit scores with an ESG score. And you can get into the politics all you want, but I, I, I think things are going to go back to the insurance industry and the finance industry. So if you don't have a, a project or you don't have a, a good ESG score, forget your credit score, um, you're not going to get a loan to do a project or you're not going to get a loan to buy a house or you're not going to be able to insure that, which means you're not going to be able to get it because you have to have insurance. A great example. Take a look at what just happened in California last week. State yeah. farm insurance. Oh yes. Hold out of new home construction and insuring new homes in California because of ESG score. And the cost of, of the regulation in California for building a house, it's gotten ridiculous. So if you build a million-dollar house, uh, but with the regulation and the codes and everything you have to have so it's environmentally friendly and blah, 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 that house could cost $3 million. Well, if you're an insurance company and you have to insure a home for the replacement value of that home, but the house is only worth a million dollars, it was all the other crap that causes it to be $3 million. What do you pay out if uh, if there's a loss, if there's a fire? Because it's not the $3 million, it's the $1 million. So State Farm just said, enough of this crap, we're out of here. They're not insuring people. Right. Well, that's ESGs, right. which is a social credit score. Yep. So if you can imagine going to a bank and you, you've you been saving for 15 years to buy your house, and, and you have your 20% down. You got my or big change jar. Right. Or now, acorns. Exactly. Exactly. And <laughs> thank you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I hope that, I hope that's working I out. I love it. I love acorns. Yeah, it's good. Um, so yeah, you, uh, you go in and then the loan officer comes up to you and says, I'm sorry, Mr. Bakken, but according to our records, you haven't stopped at this particular stop sign at this intersection for the last year and a half. Completely possible. You, <laughs> you just roll through the stop sign. So, 
Because of this, your social credit score has actually dropped below 640, and we can no longer offer you credit for the house that you've been... Actually, it's more likely, Mr. Bach, and you live in Bismarck, North Dakota, and everybody rolls through a (laughs) red light uh, three or four cars deep, so you're guilty by association, so you cannot get a house because of... But this this is what I'm talking about here, because you're you're not in the social... You're not smiling enough when you're out in public. Maybe you didn't shake somebody's hand uh, when you greeted them, so you get docked a little bit for that. I mean, who knows, and who's making these decisions? Well, as that's to the other part stopped. of it, Marlo. It's subjective. It is subjective. Who's in charge? It's subjective. So, it, I mean, is that stop sign? I mean, do you literally have to come to a dead stop and with nobody coming from any direction at all and still and that's still going to dock you for for not stopping there. I mean, this is I would rather thing. see a stop sign actually. I was in Minnesota a week or yeah, so yeah, ago. I know your roundabouts. Way too yeah, many roundabouts. Yeah, yeah, you're still you're still kind of dizzy from them. Yeah, very much so. Uh but it it's interesting to me <clears throat> that we're moving into this this social credit that might actually be more important to lending institutions to your ability to rent a house to potentially even eating out. That's more important than your credit score. Okay, so. you, you mentioned the food side of that. And um, when you start talking about the social side of stuff, take a look uh, a couple years ago in New York City. They passed a law that said, nope, because of obesity, you can't buy a large pop. Right. And what just happened in New York? They just passed an anti-discrimination bill for, you guessed it, you can't discriminate against size or health or things like that. So now you can buy a large pop? I, it doesn't make any sense. But it, it? it but it comes back to a subjective social That's score. Correct. So nothing makes sense at all. So anyway, I think that uh, it is something that we have to really look out for in this country. <laughs> thank you and uh um it'll be a great time i think for people to investigate this because i don't know about you but we are there are more and more cameras everywhere everywhere big brother is here well always watching like i say all the time it's like oh good lord i'm glad they didn't have camera phones when i was in college <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> well, but okay, so you know, we talked about the mental health with screen time and all that stuff a little bit earlier and and you take a look at some of those pressures that kids are under today. Oh yeah. So, yeah, and, and there's those that are kind of dumb and don't realize that yeah, you're probably going to be on a video if you do something stupid. Um what are the ramifications of that from a mental health perspective? So, you did something, a youthful mistake, which we all made youthful mistakes. Some people still make youthful mistakes. But Absolutely. Y- you made a youthful mistake, and it never goes away. Never goes away. Yet you, you don't work through it. You don't rebound from it. It never goes away. Yep. And that's a legitimate concern. Yeah, it is. And and I think you have to really be cognitive, and and especially parents have to really understand you know in in the age that we live that they have to be careful and they have to make sure that they're parenting you know their children so they don't do or at least the best that they can yeah you know i mean you never know the influences that kids are going to run into you know when you have the talk with your kids right which talk is it now (laughs) yeah that's a good question actually because the talk there's a lot of talks with your kids my, now my, my guess is the talk that you and i had with our parents is probably doesn't even go on much anymore no, not at all no because they're educated everywhere else you and know. what is the talk yeah. parents need to be having with their kids yeah, the talk. a lot of it's the social media it stuff is. it's whatever you do will follow you forever right. it's never going to go away don't be stupid yeah make smart choices yep. well like my wife always says make good choices yeah 
Uh, so she tells her students all the time, and she's right. And you can't make enough scotcheroos to get yourself out of all trouble. She might be able to. She makes good scotcheroos. Good scotcheroos. But if you're a kid, it never goes away. Yeah. And that grates on your mental well-being. Absolutely, it does. So, yeah, we'll get into more of this. The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 1270. We're thrilled to have you with us as we continue exploring living with technology alongside Marlo and Steve. You know, it's amazing. We have gone almost two hours and not said this word or this whatever abbreviation once. We have not. It's hard to believe, actually. No AI. Not a single mention of artificial intelligence. Wow. So this is interesting. And, and this happened a little over a month ago. Uh, but it's, and, and we're just catching up to this news now. But Drake and The Weeknd, you're familiar with these artists? Drake, yeah. Okay, and The Weeknd. The Weeknd, okay. yeah. AI song pulled from Spotify and Apple. Okay. Really? Yep. Goes on. A song that uses artificial intelligence to clone the voices of Drake and The Weeknd is being removed from streaming services. Heart on My Sleeve is no longer available on Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, and Tidal. So, now, who did the song? So I Was that their permissions, or did they have I it pulled? I do not or? believe that uh, the creator known as Ghostwriter claims the song was created by software trained on the musicians' voices. So trained the software and then created this song. The song goes viral. And uh, and it was stated that AI helped create the song. With the artist's permission? No artist's permission. Okay, that's the problem. That is the problem. So um, so it's been pulled. Who gets the royalty checks? It's also being pulled from TikTok, YouTube, but some versions remain available. It follows stinging criticism from publishers, Universal Music Group, which said the song violated copyright law. Absolutely, it The does. music publisher said platforms had a legal and ethical responsibility to prevent the use of services harming artists. So it's no different than if yours and my voices are cloned and put together another tech show, for example. That already happens, though. Not, not with us, but great example. James Earl Jones signed right. a contract. Right. He will always be the voice of Darth Vader. But that's even when he's no longer around. But that is be, with his permission. With his permission. Right. And but AI will he'll always be the voice of Darth Vader. And the software that we use by the way uh to record this show which hopefully I think we're getting better at getting it, right? Better at okay, it. good. So again, we apologize everybody we're training on new software here to create the Tech Ranch. Um, training on not training. That's True. Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, has has a feature. I don't know if you've seen this for cloning our voices. So I, I didn't see that. Anyway. So, for example, you know, a little bit earlier, I had a little bit of a cough and you could go in and you could actually have my AI voice. Just redo that. You didn't know that, did you? No, I did not. Yeah. yeah. It takes it's 70 sent, sent, sentences. You can have the AI, my clone, do that as well. And after, it takes about an hour to go through Marlo this. Marlowe seashells by the seashell. Right. And then within a day, it'll come back, and it will have your, your AI voice trained. Crazy. And, and I guess it's, this one is, I have one already. They already use it uh, in another program in my office here. Is it taller and better looking? Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Skinnier, more hair, all of this stuff. It's stronger. Well, if you're going to go all in, go all in, right? That's exactly right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, and they use it uh, not all the time, but if I'm not around and they need something real quick because uh, of my, you know, and it's just my extensive travel schedule, which, which continues to get worse. So I don't have as much time that I can record like I used to. Um, they'll use the AI to, they'll type out the script and, and the AI will it's read like it. It's like that Pepsi commercial. And that's what they use it for mostly is those little uh, bumpers. And Do you really like Pepsi things. or are you just acting? I'm acting. Those are acting. dumb commercials, but it's similar. Yeah. Okay, so here's one of the things that it, 
I'm a, I've gotten to be really cognizant of this because of some of the voice technology that's out there. And you talk about deep fakes. And we've talked about uh, Zelensky, Ukrainian president, yeah. uh, having conversations with some pretty high up folks in Europe about finances and the European Union and, and in-depth conversations. It's not Zelensky. Right. Not him. Yeah. Uh, and not once, not twice, not three. People keep falling for it. And Well, it's easy to fall for. Right. So one of the things I've gotten a little cognizant of is when, when you get a spam call, and most of them are not real people. Right. You, you can hear the pauses, and, and, and it's either artificial intelligence or it's some sort of a programmed uh, conversation. I don't answer questions that are yes or no. Because they quite often ask a question that the answer is yes. Is this Steve? Yes. No, well, I'm not saying yes anymore. Right. And but, why is that, but, Steve? But it's not the artificial intelligence side of things yet. Um, it's the, I don't want a recording of me saying yes to go, oh, but, but he ordered the Encyclopedia right. Britannica. Right. He said yes. Not to that. Yeah. But, hey. they, but they've now have enough sample of your voice to actually get a voice confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, you, I've been you, cognizant of that for a you while. You would say this is Steve, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, you, if you don't know what to say, just don't say something. Right. Yeah. Don't answer yes or don't true answer yes or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah Correct. I agree. Yeah. This is, this is really interesting. But now throw AI on that. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. it's scary. And, you know, what are we to believe and not believe moving forward? There's going to have to be a verification tool that this has been verified by such and such service to be true. A blue check? A blue check. I get a blue check? Wouldn't that be cool? I want a blue check. Where are you going to put that at? I don't know. Where, where are you supposed to put it? I don't know. On your forehead? I, I don't know. On a badge. On a badge. <laughs> that you wear around. And then there's also a red check that uh, people can push. It's scary. So again, back to which conversation should parents be having with their kids? Yeah. By the way, the last hour of the program we're gonna have fun. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just, you know, yeah, no more conspiracy theories? We're, we're gonna do app wars, you and I. Ooh. Yes. We haven't done this yet on the tech ranch. No, we have not. I. In fact, you and I have never done app wars for as many times as we've been on the air. So this will be fun. Absolutely will be fun. So you want to stay tuned for that a little bit later. Um, yeah, I, I, there has to be. And maybe you and I need to invent this. I don't know. Some type of verification service because I don't trust anything that I, that I hear or that I see on, on, a on screen. the Internet. On a screen. Yeah. Now, I would have to say that if I'm hearing it on radio, right, you know, like you're hearing us right now, probably, or, you know, but, or if you're listening to us on yeah, a digital. Yeah, but really? Because I, I know there's some large broadcast companies that are delving into AI. You know, you used to voice track, and so, oh, so I'm hearing somebody, but it was a live person, and they're not in the studio because I see them over at my favorite restaurant over there. Uh, but they're on the radio, right? Okay, voice track. It was so I have an interesting challenge. Digital recording. However. We're, you and I are going to clone our voices. We're going to do one segment in the next month. Okay. That will be an AI version well, some of, of you and I. Some of the large companies are, are looking at doing that. And, yes. And not having real people be DJs anymore. It would be kind of crazy. Are you going to be taller, skinnier? Okay, absolutely. If I'm right. going in, I'm going all in. If you have any questions or want to suggest topics for future shows, visit thetechranch.com and send us your thoughts. You can also listen to past episodes and watch exclusive interviews not featured on the radio show. Be sure to follow Marlo and Steve on social media by clicking the links at thetechranch.com. Until next time, keep exploring the world of living with technology. The Tech Ranch. 
Welcome to June 10th, 2023 in the National Day Calendar. Today we celebrate Beating the Heat, American Style, and Disappearing Ink. Your heart performs 365 days a year without missing a beat. So isn't it fair to give back to the hardest working organ in your body? Million Hearts is an organization that's dedicated to preventing 1 million cases of heart disease and stroke in the next five years. Visit their website, millionhearts.hhs.gov, to find out how to take care of your ticker. That's millionhearts.hhs.gov. This common everyday drink was so popular that at one point in history, it changed the world economy and sparked a revolution. That beverage, of course, is tea. In the 1700s, the demand was great and the English began importing more than 3,000 tons. While their trade fleets brought wealth and power to the British Empire, they also brought the Boston Tea Party and the American Revolution. And in the end, it all worked out as the British maintained their elaborate tea customs and we're free to follow our laid-back American style. On National Ice Tea Day, find a spot in the shade and enjoy this perfect way to beat the heat. Considering how quickly they disappear from desks, ballpoint pens can seem like a precious commodity. And when they were first introduced in America in 1945, they were priced as if they were. The first ballpoint pen sold in the United States, the Reynolds Rocket, was priced at $12.50, which is the equivalent of $150 today. Despite the hefty price tag, the Reynolds company sold nearly 1.5 million units that year. Today, over 3.5 billion of these pens are imported into the United States annually. Safe to say that they've become an integral part of everyday life, even if you can never find one when you need it. On National Ballpoint Pen Day, celebrate the ordinary item we can't seem to live without. And I just want it to be stated, I don't steal anybody's pens, right, oh, John? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you are the worst. That's the worst. How many worst. Reynolds rockets have you stolen over the years? Well, I'm not telling. I want to be <laughs> indicted. Enough to go from here to the moon. I bet you people didn't forget their pens like they do now back no, in 1945, that's right? That's true. You know Anna, me and my feet. I'd like to write down the timing, <laughs> but I don't have my pen. Oh, sorry. I'm Anna DeVere. I'm Marlo Anderson. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate every day. See you tomorrow. Celebrate every day. Listen daily for the National Day Calendar Radio Short on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 app. This is the Pet Minute. I'm Steve Dale. Hot Lips Houlihan is still spreading love for pets. Next. Your dog loves going to the dog park and seeing his buddies. Maybe sometimes when you travel, he gets to hang out with friends at his favorite boarding facility. Social dogs like yours need more protection than most. By pairing Bordetella Protection, also known as Kennel Cough, with immunity against canine influenza, we can help ensure these dogs stay healthy. Merck Animal Health Health wants you to talk with your veterinarian about pairing up for protection with vaccines for your dog for kennel cough and the canine influenza virus. Don't wait. Vaccinate. The ageless Loretta Swit still has energy to do everything she can to help animals, including service dogs. She said she uh, lets me know when I should take my heart medicine. The dog actually will tap her or nuzzle or do something to tell her when the heart needed the medication. You can support Loretta's Swit Heart Animal Alliance at her website, switheart.org. For the Pet Minute, I'm Steve Dale. Glenn Beck. At times, I wonder if people in the Pentagon aren't like, you know, guys, we need some distractions. You know, hey, aliens are real. It's so weird that these things are coming out and no one talks about it. When I was growing up or even it's a pretty big 20 deal. years ago, these stories would have been huge. Everywhere. Front page on every newspaper. And have you told people about these things that are coming from the Pentagon and they're like, no, that didn't happen. You're like, yes, it did. The Glenn Beck Program. The Glenn Beck Program. Weekdays from 11 till 2 on Super Talk 1270. KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square media station. Broadcasting from the VIEW Community Credit Union Studio. Here's the latest from ABC News. I'm Dave Packer. Despite a second criminal indictment, former President Trump will press on with his 2024 campaign. 
Making stops in North Carolina and Georgia today, ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Greensboro, North Carolina. Trump is making it clear that this historic indictment will not stop him from seeking another term, and the law allows him to run even if he is found guilty. Trump is still the front runner in a growing field of more than a dozen Republican presidential candidates. We have been speaking with GOP voters here who say that this indictment could only embolden Trump, helping him raise campaign funds. Many of them are still pledging their support. For the former president. Also campaigning in North Carolina today, former Vice President Mike Pence delivering the keynote speech at the North Carolina State Republican Party convention today in Greensboro, where he pushed back on earlier comments by campaign opponents like Governor Ron DeSantis. The war being waged in eastern Ukraine is not a territorial dispute, it is not the work of a genius, it is unprovoked invasion driven by one man, Vladimir Putin. Meanwhile, a high-level meeting in Ukraine, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Kyiv meeting with President Zelensky, announcing new funding to help Ukraine fight the Russian invasion. I'm announcing that Canada will be part of the multinational efforts to train fighter pilots and to maintain and support Ukraine's fighter jet program, leveraging Canadian expertise in these areas. Plus, Trudeau pledged uh, $500 million in new military aid on top of $8 billion that Canada has already provided since the war started. The Unabombers died. Ted Kaczynski found dead in his prison cell at a facility in North Carolina, terrorizing the nation with mail bombs for nearly two decades. Authorities eventually tracing Kaczynski down to a primitive Montana cabin after his manifest was made public and Kaczynski Kaczynski's own brother recognized his writings and alerted the FBI. That's ABC's Michelle Franz, and you're listening to ABC News. Super Talk 1270, Bismarck Area Weather. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, mostly sunny, a bit breezy. Highs in the mid-70s. Breezy tonight, mostly clear, 49. Sunshine, 76 for your Sunday. For Sunday night, mostly clear, a low around 51. Sunshine Monday, a high near 81. For Tuesday, sunny with a high near 86. Try Grandpa's Barbecue Sauce, made from an original family recipe. Get it at grandpasbbqshop.com. Right now, 71 degrees. Bismarck Mandan has a new talk show. It's Talk of the Town with Steve Bakken on Super Talk 1270. Join Steve weekday mornings between 9 and 11 for interesting local talk and special guests. Plus, your phone calls. Talk of the Town with Steve Bakken on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Talk of the Town thanks our sponsors. Big Boy, Trademark Realty, Silver Ranch, Mandan Sporting Goods, and Peak Automotive and Service. Conservative talk without apology. The Regular Joe Show with Joe Giganti. Weekday evenings at 9 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Welcome to the Tech Ranch, where we explore the world of living with technology. Get ready to take a deep dive into the latest gadgets, apps, and innovations with your hosts, the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson, and his trusty co-host, Steve Botkin. Join us on this exciting journey, and don't forget to visit thetechranch.com for even more exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marlo and Steve to the Tech Ranch. So it's mosquito season. Have you noticed? Yeah, a little bad. Oh my goodness! That's all I can. When say. I was in Minnesota a week or so ago, oh. You know, I swear Boom. we, I swear we went from snow to mosquitoes. Yeah. There wasn't even and road really construction. a break. Don't forget the road construction. Yeah. Well, that started before the snow was gone, I think. But it did actually this year, which is weird. Well, it's because the snow was around for so long. But the mosquitoes are. I can't remember the last season that we've seen. So many mosquitoes so early in the year, too. I mean, it's just crazy. But have you seen this thing? Heat it. So I'm going to take it out of its box. So it's called Heat It, H-E-A-T space I-T. It's an insect bite treatment that you use with your phone. Really? So how cool is that? For, for bites now, not for keeping them away. That's right. It's for bites. So if you actually get bit by a mosquito. It's got a mosquito on the picture. And then you, I'm not doing a good job of getting out of the box here. Is it that hard to open a box? No, it, no it's not. But it, I think because we traveled with it, it actually got out of its folder here. So. Got to be smarter than the box. Yeah, I hate to break the box, though. Parrot. 
record a little bit because I really want to get it out of here. I have no, there we go. Okay. So it looks like a little flash drive. Okay. Okay. And then you just, you just pull it out of the thing here. Goes right into your USB-C, um, USB-C on your phone. Lights up. <clears throat> and it's lighting up right now. You see that thing working, right? Oh, yeah. And then it gets hot on the end of it. There's a little heat plate. And what you do is you just push that up against this. What is it? Maybe a half inch long here. It's pretty small. And then you push it up against the inset bite. And because the heat then will dissipate the pain or the itching that you have going on with that bug bite. So you don't have to whip out the cigarette lighter from your Something like car that. or yeah. truck anymore? Yeah, yeah. Most of them don't have them anymore. Yeah. That's a thing. This is actually pretty slick. I but just, it works. Well, yeah, it's hot right now. You should run outside and get bit by a mosquito I, I and have, see if it works. I have plenty of them on my legs right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Will it actually. light up a wood tick? That's what I want to know. It's, if you don't have a match with you, can you so I, oh, a wood I see. tick with so, it? They, so it's made with, oh, made with love in Germany. <laughs> 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 you got to love the card that comes with it. Ich liebe dich. Yeah, <laughs> that's too funny. I love you in German. Um, it uh um oh well, is that what that means? Yeah, yeah. I love you in German. So the the thing that pulls off here is actually so it can attach to your keychain. Well so you look just carry, at that. You just carry it with on your keychain and if you get bit or stung by an insect, you just take this thing off, you put it on your phone, and it'll take the sting or the or the itch away. I wonder if my Yarbo is gonna have that feature. <laughs> You're out in the yard with your Yarbo, and you get stung by a mosquito. Oh, my by a mosquito, if you can. You're hilarious. Okay. Just asking. Plug the heated device into your smartphone. The LED light will blink green when the device is correctly connected to the smartphone. The heat-up app will open automatically on your phone. Oh, you first you have to install the heated app on your Android phone, so just so you know. Oh, it's, it's probably, not just plug it in and it yeah, works. Yeah. You have to have the app. Probably why it was glowing red, right? He was up, angry at you. He didn't have the app. In your phone when you plug it in. <laughs> the heat it will preheat for a short time. Completion will be sing- signaled on the smartphone screen. Press the heat it onto the affected skin area for the given duration of time. So there you go. And that works. This is actually a pretty clever. You know, you think you you you, you think you've heard of everything that you can do with a smart device, right? And then here comes somebody with a little $19 widget that plugs into the into your phone that takes the sting away from bug bites. I want to see you use it. I want, I want to see that it really works. All right. <laughs> Go outside and get bit by a bug just for you, okay. Steve. You could save it for next week. I'll take okay. your word for it if okay. you want. But I, I use it. And- yeah, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to do that. I probably should have uh, did a box opening for a YouTube or something with this. But you know what would be cool? With that. AI mosquitoes. What would an AI mosquito be like? Oh, like little zombie mosquitoes running around. Oh, yeah. That's what we need yeah. is more mosquitoes. I'm just saying. So, anyway, I didn't mean to disrupt our our um, app wars thing that we were going to oh, get yeah. going here. But I thought this was clever enough. That but if was, you had the app for Heat It, then then it would actually it actually is my my opening volley to you your app war. for app wars. Yes, app wars, nothing but app wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna get a theme song done for <laughs> app wars. <laughs> You know, this was actually the most popular segment of the tech branch in the past. Really, it was App Wars? Yeah, yeah. I'd bring people in, and and the whole idea behind this, because I know you haven't done this before, is that you're supposed to one up me with the apps that we talked. By about. the way, when you were singing that song, the theme song, yeah, for Star Wars. For some reason, the only thing going through my head was Spaceballs. <laughs> just, just telling you. Well, of course it would be. So the premise of the of App Wars is simple, Steve. All you have to do, will, will, you will give me a topic. Let's say it's movie watching. And I will tell you what I use, and you have to share with the users what you use to watch movies on your phone. Simple as that. Okay? Perfect. And the, and the idea is to 
so that everybody knows what you and I use. And I'm hopeful that people will, you know, say, oh, that's really, that's a clever way to use that app. And then if you have clever ways that you use the app, you know, that maybe the standard person wouldn't use or I'm whatever. I'm a little more analog, though. I don't use creative, cool. I'll use, like, a website that has their features. Okay. So I'll go... For example, Netflix. I, yeah. I I will go to Netflix and watch something on my phone. The other forty people on our account. Um, <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. Netflix, if you're listening, it's, I'm just. They're actually, fixing that though. Actually, they are it's fixing fi- that. It's Fifty three, by the way. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're on there too now, right? <laughs> yes, I okay. am. Uh, or and my family, by the way. I have Midcontinent, so I'll go to the Midco app because there's a lot of cool features in their own app to go watch different programs because right. I can be traveling and watch my local news yep. or what my local programming. So yep. um, I, I tend to go to the source rather than, oh, here's a cool app for that. Yeah, I can I can understand that. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's start with, let's start with financial. Acorns. <laughs> you got me turned on to acorns, and I love acorns. So why don't you tell everybody what is acorns? So acorns is a, every time I use my credit card, um, the and change. It, so it basically took the place, because you and I were talking one day that uh, change jars used to be a thing. And I used to love my change jar, and I would put money into it, and I would even put dollars and tens and fives and twenties and Just whatever I had in my pocket, I would throw into the change jar. And good Lord, it was amazing the amount of money you would save because it was out of sight, out of mind. And, hey, I'm going on vacation. Well, there's $800 in the change jar. I think I I had $1,400 one time in a change jar uh, over the course of a year. And it was just extra change. But we don't use cash anymore. So there's no change. And you and I were talking about that one day, and you were like, well, acorns. And I love it. I, I It's my change jar now. Yep. So if I buy something at the hardware store for $12.18, 88 cents, did I do the math right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the round up to the yeah, it, the, the it rounds you up. Gotten. Yeah, so the change you would have gotten back if you would have paid cash goes into this app, right. and then they'll download the the number. It, it's awesome. I love it. And the thing is, is that when it goes in, you can actually set a, a, a you know if you want to invest it. Yeah, you can set it so that it actually makes money on itself as well. So there's a lot of flexibility. In yep. It. So I know it's been a few months since I shown you mine. So this is what a little. By acorns. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm glad that we're both not laughing at that. Um, but this is for over three years, just over three years. What does that number say? I, I seem to recall last time it was about $3,000 less. Uh, yes. Uh, I think so. $26,820.15 in three years. In three years. This is my change jar money. That's your change jar. Yeah. And and because it's been reinvested into the into the stock market or whatever, it has actually grown to twenty six thousand dollars. So and you've I, gone from a little acorn to a mighty oak. And I don't, I would never talk about money on this show. But I, I just the reason I'm sharing it, and the only reason I'm sharing it is because it's, it's a change so, jar. It's so powerful. And and what we're talking about here, this kind of money, not that this changes lives a lot. But twenty six thousand dollars isn't isn't a bad little chunk of change to have. No, from a change jar. Yeah, I mean, another couple of years, I have enough down payment on a house here. I mean, it, or I can take a mo- the most amazing vacation ever out of your couch cushions. Yes. or or the seat of your car, or the ashtray in your car for new and no nothing more different than what I did before by throwing change right. in a jar. But I would I'd put it into something or give it to the kids or or whatever. And those are good things to do too. So. I'm not trying to take the place of it, but the thing is that we're we've they moved into this. For themselves. Well, and we're in this cashless kind of society now, right? Right. So we don't pay for things like we used to with cash. I, I I'll go for a week, and uh, I'll have twenty bucks in my pocket, and I still have twenty bucks in my oh. pocket at the end of the week. <laughs> I, I remember back when I was in high school and and 
college and working multiple jobs to pay for school and and pay for gas and make my car payment and and I would always at the end of the day grab the crispy dollar bills and fives and tens because I didn't spend them as fast because right. they were crispy right. and I liked crispy money. So, but, but psychologically <laughs> I didn't, if yeah, I got all sh- shredded, tattered up right. bills. You want to yeah, get rid, get of, rid of, of that? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But the crispy dollars, I held on to those. Yeah. So make sure you get acorns, A C O R N S and make sure you get the right one. It's got the green acorn on it. Yes. And it's got an S on it, but yeah. it is amazing. The Tech Ranch. Love. Get ready for more amazing tech insights from the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. You know, you brought up a really, you kind of reminded me, Steve, when you were spelling that out. Why is that so important? Oh, I've gotten in the habit of somebody will tell me about a new app. I'm like, send me a screenshot of the app. I want to see what the badge looks like because there's so many nefarious out there. There's copycat apps that really aren't the app. I I remember... um, to bank at Wells Fargo. And when Wells Fargo first came out with their app, there was several Wells Fargo apps out there. There was only one that was real. Right. Uh, so for your online banking on your phone and and you got to be careful because there are so many nefarious copycats out there and if you're not aware or you go, "Oh, okay, Acorns" and just click on Acorns, well there might be 3 Acorns. So verify. You have to verify before you download anything on your phone. And and phones are usually pretty safe from malware or viruses. But if you got an app that you install that might uh, track your your keystrokes, or yeah, uh, you got to be careful. You have to be careful. Yeah. Don't don't give permission to a flashlight app that wants. Yeah. your contact information and access to your photos and all that stuff because it's a flashlight, right? Yeah, so it's a flashlight. Just be careful when you're putting new apps on your phone. So I agree. Make sure you're getting the one that you want. So, all right. Next up on App Wars. By the I way, see. what was your financial one? Because I well, kind of stole yours. But... Well, that's okay. I mean, actually, I brought it up because I wanted I wanted people to understand that we, you and I do agree on things occasionally. We do? And Acorns is one of those. Oh, by yeah, yeah. yeah. Make sure I you, love it. I, make sure I, get... I absolutely love acorns. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next on my list would be the Northern Lights. You know, you told me about that app. That... You don't have an app? For no, the I, I, I don't. Um, I used to have on my phone, and, and when I got a new phone, I didn't reinstall it for some reason, uh, Constellations. It, it oh, showed... Yeah. Uh, you could you Sky set Watch. your phone down and it would be a, it, it would yeah it was it was Skywatch or I Sky, think it's Skywatch yeah, yeah. and that, that's that's what I had and you set your phone down push the button and it tracks this it calculates where you're at time day all that because I think the only permission was your phone clock um, but it would locate where you're at. And then tell you what the constellations yeah, above you are. It's or over amazing. there is the North Star. Over there. But it was, it would tell you when the Northern Lights were. were oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It, yeah. it was an, it, the last iteration of the app, because it was an upgrade, it was like, oh, it shows Northern Lights now. Uh, but you could look at, or um, a comet that was coming. Or, yeah, so that's, an, a, yeah. and satellites. Yeah, and satellites. I used too. to love, the, I, in fact, well, I still. Well, there's another app for satellites, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, we'll, we'll run into that in my list here in a little while, but, but because uh, I'll go out on the deck at night now, since it's nice outside, and I'll put it up to the sky and look for the different satellites and stuff. Right. So Which used, piece of space junk is going to kill me? That's kind of right, isn't well, kinda. it? Kind of. Yeah. Um, Aurora is the one that I use. Junk up there. Yeah, there is. Um, A-U-R-O-R-A. It actually shows the KP index, which is the probability uh, calculating the chance of seeing aurora based on your location. So it knows where you're at. And then so the KP index, as we're recording, uh, is 2.67 right now. So it's really, really low. Is there an index for being struck by space junk? There probably is. I bet you State Farm would take Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except in California. Except in California. Um, 
so yeah, so and then, then it actually shows you the best locations now, and it actually has live Aurora webcams as well. Ooh. So that would be kind of fun to watch. We well, see well, that on the news so. all the time yeah, when, when they're really active and, yep. and uh, our local news channels yep. have a really good job of sky watching the the uh, people sending in videos and some of them are this year has been really good for it has been for Northern except, Lights. Exceptional and they expect it to get better. Really? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of solar activity right now. They waned so. for a while because I remember growing up we had a cabin up in Ontario in Canada yep. and being farther north the colors were amazing yeah. Yeah. Um, because we, we see a lot of green. Right. Um, or a little bit of the, the reddish. Yeah. But you could see, because I remember when I was little, and, and I have not seen them for a long time like this, but you could see Roy G. Biv, very clear and there's very, very, very acutely. And I, I have seen some photographs this year so far, even where we live here in North Dakota. And they have the color spectrum that you're talking about. So it's very rare to see what Roy G. Biv stands for. Red, green, blue. Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Red, green, blue. No. But tell me. Red, orange, yellow, green. Roy. Oh, so it's all. All of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Blue, indigo, violet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Roy G. Biv. I've never heard that before. Really? No. I heard that. I just going by Ironic RGB device. Yeah, that's good. When I was back in yeah. grade school, like algorithm. It's funny what you hold. Me. Yeah, yeah, your your algorithm. <laughs> it's funny what you hold on to. Every time I say that <laughs> word, all I think is about is our vice president Al Gore dancing. I just think you chair dancing, but that's. <laughs> it's funny what we hang on to. That's yeah. correct. All right, next up on my list is, um, remote cameras remote cameras yeah do you have like do you have cameras at your house yeah actually we just installed one for ah, i forget the name of the app and it has to um, have yeah it has to have an app yeah yep. um it, it's for, it's a pet camera oh for our dogs so do you, do you have the camera on the dogs yeah so that it's on their leash or yeah. on their collar no, so when they walk the, around it's in the kennel oh, i think it'd so, be more fun the other way yeah it's in the kennel and it's got a speaker so i can pull up the app and talk to my dog it should be called collar cam that'd be good right that would be good and then you see you it's a dog's view of everything or your pet's view of everything that's like cat videos on your <laughs> vacuum cleaner <laughs> No, but it, people would. Wa- I would watch that. It would be. It's not cat videos on on the vacuum cleaner. It would be the cat video or the be the cat laying on the on the vacuum cleaner, looking out. So it, it, you would see what the cat is viewing as it's laying on the Roomba. Yeah, but the fun part with that would be, you'd have to narrate it. That would be full. That would yeah. be hilarious. Yeah. Okay, those yeah. would make good videos. Yeah. Yeah. Collar cam. Collar cam. Business idea number 438 brought to you by no the kidding. Tech Ranch. Um, <laughs> Somebody build a collar cam, please. I, I can't remember what the name of the app is. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to sidetrack you here. Well, that's pet, okay. It, it, it's it, like cam. that never happens. The pet cam. But, yeah. And, uh, so are you using this as a home security device as well? No, actually. We're just using it to, to keep an eye on the dogs. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So I've got the app. My wife's got the app. And, okay. and we can we can actually talk to them. Do they respond when you talk to them? Oh, yeah. They look at you like, where are you? <laughs> and they... our younger dog is like, okay, because she sees dead people anyway. Now she really thinks she sees dead people. This, this she is doesn't know where the dog. voice is coming yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. Way to confuse your what dogs. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Kind of fun, though. So Actually, um, they're going, where, where's our treat? <laughs> well, my, my camera system is not as fun as yours. It's just blink. But easy, oh. uh, brought to you by Amazon, I believe, or you can buy them on Amazon and maybe other places. Uh, and it, these cameras, you just they're easy to put up. But and, you use them for security. Yes. Yeah. And and there's a battery that goes into them, and it's real easy to sync them to not to torment your, your pets. phone. And uh, I believe you can talk through it as well if you have the you right can camera. Talk to know. the animals. That's right. Or talk to the <laughs> talk to the person who broke into your place. Right? Wouldn't that be fun? Hey, hey put down the TV. <laughs> but leave. <laughs> just, just leave. Make me a sandwich before you yeah, go. Yeah, please. 
The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 1270. G is our passion. Let's jump back into the conversation with Marlo and Steve. So Blink. I love Blink, by the way. I like the band. Blink? 182? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All should... of them. Right. So if I put 182 cameras up. Oh, yeah. Then you'd be Blink 182. Blink 182, yeah. That's a good idea. There's actually a, an eyewear store in town that Blink. Blink. Yeah. Yeah. But not related to the band. Not no, not or or related. to the soft or the security. Well, maybe the stuff, band gets yeah. their glasses yeah. there. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um. Next on my list is travel. What Actually, you... just to oh, finish yeah, yeah. up, just to finish up on the camera though, because yeah. it's important. And security cameras becoming more because you you know ring and ring doorbells yeah, and, and, and ring, security and, cameras, and we have a ring as well, right? Yeah. So, how flexible is Blink? Why'd you go that route? Um, are they wireless? Are they what? What's the nuance that made you go to blink? Yes, all of that. Okay. So they're wireless. It's a. It's there's Size. no no wiring at all. Okay. Uh, they're they'll probably the only downside is that they are uh well, they operate on a battery. You know, so you have to change the battery occasionally in them. But I, I, I figured yeah, that that when you change your smoke detectors, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know, what's funny is that once you have it set up, and then it sets up uh, to your Alexa if you have an Alexa or, or any Amazon. Well, that's my technique. other question. They're they're all integrated. So if one goes on, they all go on, or they're all separate. Motion well, sensors, or, or, or linked, or so like like my Alexa as I walk into the office today uh, here was yellow, meaning that there's a notification. So I asked it what its no- notification was, and it said that the the camera on the front door's battery is going low. Would you like me to order a battery for you? You know, of course, but but at least it's telling you that the battery is low, so you can just go replace it. Astro bit me. Yeah. So, and <laughs> speaking of that, if you're gonna really do a deep dive into the security thing, so Ring, well, it's important for a lot of people. And and Ring actually had a little bit of a bad rap because. Google had they they were linking them, yes. unbeknownst to a lot of yeah, people. They were and creating their own little network. They kind were, of, yeah. and people people got a little upset about they that. Did. Yep, yep. So the I'm not sure. I thought it was Ring, but I might be wrong. But Astro, our new robot, is also a security device. Did you know this? Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, it'll actually, we can put it in security mode. And it, sick them, Astro, it'll, sick them. It'll roll around the office, and if it senses anything's out of place, you know, if it hears a noise or sees something or whatever, it'll actually go and investigate. Oh, and it doesn't go hide like my dogs? And <laughs> record the whole thing and send it to you. And then you can talk through Astro if there's actually somebody in the building again, you know, please leave and, and make me a sandwich on your way out. <laughs> so... The sandwich is important. It is important. If you want me to call the police, then leave and not make a sandwich. But if you are nice and make a sandwich or two, then I might not call. Just the leave. Just make me a sandwich. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So I I really like that with Astro the robot is that we can put it in security mode and it'll just run around and, and investigate stuff. So there's a little bit of a peace of mind there. And of course, if if it runs into somebody. Uh, it'll go into periscope mode and really freak people out. So I have a question. What did you think of the periscope the first time? It's shorter than you said it was. Well, okay. okay but, but other than that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What's your uh, question? And you're like, wow. Because I was sitting down and popped up and I'm like, oh, we're, we can have an eye-to-eye conversation yeah. with yeah. Astro. Yeah. So my question is, if you were going to have somebody make you a sandwich, because I think I'm hungry now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you were going to have somebody make you a sandwich, before they left that had broken into your house, what kind of sandwich would it be? Oh, my goodness. It would have to be lettuce, uh, thinly sliced tomatoes, a little bit of mayo, certainly some thinly sliced cheddar cheese, and then the protein. Um, You know what? Bacon. Yeah, bacon. <laughs> they have to. They have to actually okay, fry so bacon. So the question is, and then wash the dishes. If you didn't have the ingredients, would you tell them to go get the ingredients and come back? 
No, I think I'd want to have them okay, just work fine. with just, what's right. there. Okay. But yes, bacon would be the I think preferred. I'm hungry, I BLT would yeah. sound really Run over really to Cloverdale, the right cottage now. store. Yeah. Get, yeah. Please give me some bacon. Um, okay, next on my app list is travel. So what do you use for travel? I use Google Maps more than anything else. I So I'm not talking about actual traveling as a mapping or a GPS thing. What, what do you use the book travel? Like getting a hotels or airplane flights uh, or anything so i i again i go back to if i'm going to fly delta i go to the delta app if okay. i fly united i'm going to the united app i'll book directly i i don't go you don't to, go to like an orbit or no, travelocity um, and, and quite a, what i found is a lot of times uh, if you're booking things together where you need a hotel and a rental car the airline apps usually have a pretty good package deal where you're usually better off than trying to do individual. I'm going to go book a flight and then I'm going to book uh, uh, a hotel and then I need a car while I'm there. And so I, I think for me anyway, it's just, it's convenience. I think they, they I know there's some better them. apps out there for, for individual rooms. Yeah. So I, I mean, I've used orbits a lot in the past. Um, and I think Travelocity bought them out, and then I think Expedia bought all of them out. So I think Expedia owns most of the bigger travel apps now. Um, but they've done. I think you're right. I but think I'm thinking Delta, rewards too. Yeah. So I, I I use rewards programs, which kind of pushes me in that direction. Right. So you um, have a Delta card. So you yeah. if you book through Delta, you're going to get five x rewards. Or well, whatever and, and hotels that, right? the same way. Right. It's like Choice Hotels or Hilton or right. you know, it their app. Yeah. You get rewards. They've done a pretty good job of competing against the travel online travel sites. Because there's a big difference, and and I've seen occasionally, like I've booked a room, and then in a smaller hotel or whatever, and let's say it was for a hundred dollars, okay, and then I'll go in there and they'll say, oh, I see you got it through, you know, you booked it through Expedia. Well, I bought, I booked it through Orbitz, but Expedia owns it, right? And they'll have the paperwork there, and it shows sixty six dollars and eighty four cents on it. So Expedia has taken the difference of the hundred dollars to the sixty six eighty four. I'm using this as an example. So the hotel makes thirty dollars less by not doing the transaction themselves. And I have actually, on occasion, I'll call the hotel and say, "Hey, you know, instead of me booking it through Orbitz, can I just can you give me ten bucks off the hundred dollars that they're showing?" And you'd be surprised how many will say no to that. Really. Knowing, you know, if they only knew when you're talking to them that because I'm going to book it through Orbitz. Apparently, you weren't talking get, to the manager or the owner. Yeah, yeah, because I guess the $30 is is okay, but now the $10 I'll, is not. I'll use some of those occasionally if it because usually I'm planning out a trip. So right. very rarely will I be someplace and go, okay, I'm not going to make it home. I need a hotel room. Um, And then I will just to call Cross check prices, right? Uh, I'll, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll cross check prices on on some of those um, discount apps. And you can, I have, and I think I've told you this story before. I have a great story when I was in Rapid City one time. And, and to, before I get into that, though, no just, story ever begins that way <laughs> in Rapid City. I have a great story when I was in Rapid City one time. <laughs> but you should do exactly what you're talking about as far as cross-checking. Because if you're traveling and you have, you know, if you have somebody in the car with you or whatever and you have some time, call call the hotel first. Find yeah. out what the rate is and then hop online and find out if there's a better price. A lot of times if it's after 6 o'clock at night and they ha they're not even close to capacity for the evening, they'll start really discounting like on an Orbitz or a Travelocity or whatever. And the staff has no clue this is going on. Because they're, they've, it's been prearranged with, you know, through management or right. whatever to offer these discounts, right? Through the ownership group right. or whoever, yeah. So as I'm in Rapid City one time, I'm at this resort on the west end of, or on the east end of town. I forget the name of it. And and I knew it was an expensive place. I mean, it was probably 150 or 200 bucks a night, which, you know, nowadays isn't that expensive, I guess. But It's for Rapid City. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But not in prime season, you know. Uh, but this is like right now. I mean, it was like right before Memorial Day. Um, I mean, I know it's a little after Memorial Day now, but in the same same time frame. And I was, was in season. Not quite. It was close, close to, to in season. season. Yes. So 
I'm out there in the parking lot, and I decided I was going to hop on the on Orbit and find out what the price was. And it showed it was like $159 normally, but right now, if you book it right here, it's $54. Whoa! Oh. Well, I'll I'll take this room for 54 bucks. That's a great price, you know. So I booked it out in the parking lot, and then I go in. And there's this couple in front of me, this younger couple, and they just drove into town as well. And the person behind, the, they, they were like, you know, what's the price for a room? And she said it's $159, and we have like two left. And they look at each other, and they say, okay, we'll, we'll take the room. I wanted to grab them and say, just go out in the parking lot and go on orbits. You will save $100 wow. right now. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that I saved that much money on it. Was so, that you telling me uh, there was another app, too, um, about rooms that you just rent for four hours or three hours? or What is that app? Um, it, it's um, They find rooms that maybe what, you've got a layover. That's or, correct. It's designed around layovers. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to be productive or in work and not get stuck at an airport right. or train station right. or bus station. And, and these, these are not these like rent by the hour hotels. Either. No. These, these are like the Fairfield and whatever. Yeah. They're just close to an airport. But and they've got the space. And right. if they do, then they can rent it for three hours. You don't need to rent it for 24 hours. Right. You can rent it for, I, I got an eight hour layover. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I, I forget the name that of that. App. We'll have to we'll have to look that up because you're right. We just talked about that. That was you that told me about that. It is. It was, I remember and I, that. I found that rather intriguing. Yeah, and, it's, it's a good. You're idea. right. Not hourly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> different part of town. Different part of town here. Uh, yeah. But no, it, it, and from a traveler's perspective, I mean, because I'm not a. If I'm driving, if I'm traveling, I'm not a person that's going to. Um, Go book a hotel. I'll sleep in my car for a couple hours just to you know rest my eyes. If you're by yourself, yeah, yeah. And, and keep going, yeah, because I I like to get where I'm going. Yep. something like that. Yeah, I'd drop thirty, forty bucks on five, six hours. Right, you know, take He's a shower up. and rest and recuperate. And right, get a good nap because right. there, there's a difference between getting a cat nap in your vehicle and getting a really good nap. Yep, and. It, you know, there's a safety component there as well because yeah. uh, you know I've been at rest areas where I think I'm armed. <laughs> yes, but, but that's what you, know, you pull over and take a nap because you're tired on the road. And and what are you gonna do? Right, right. So yeah, I, that app that's probably something I would lose uh, use a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I'll have to dig that up. Um, next up, uh, what about contacts? Do you have a, do you have do you still get a lot of business cards? I do. I, I'm that way too. I, I still collect a lot of business cards when I'm at conventions and things. I know that if I put them in my phone right away that they're there, but I need the reminder when I come back from someplace. That's why I collect the cards because if I don't do that, I will probably forget that I talked to you because you've talked to 300 other people or whatever, right? So for me, that's important. So do you have a like a scanner or something that you use? Yeah, I just use my phone scanner. And it, it does actually collect the card information? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What kind of phone do you have? Uh, Samsung. I'm stopping because I've never heard that Samsung has such a feature. Yeah, it's... it's so you turn your... you turn your on the scanner and it'll download the photo into a file. So when you say scanner, you open up your, well, your it's, it, camera it, app or... Yeah, but it's it's a little better than the camera app because it, it the scanner will actually take a... It'll take all the information. So it came with your phone. You didn't have to download this. Uh-uh. It's called Scanner. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it, it's just the Scanner <laughs> app on my phone. <laughs> so you're not. You're not. I wouldn't have one except it was in my phone. That's interesting because I. So I use CamCard for this. Okay, I, I've used that one in the past. Okay. But now I'm intrigued by yours. You might have one up me here. I don't. I. I have a Samsung as well. What do you have for your phone? I don't know. It's. It's older. I have a Samsung I mean, it, 22 it, that I have. Here. It it upgraded one day and it was there. It's just called scanner. Yeah, it was just my uh, wow. Well, just just like when you scan a barcode on uh, right, something right. That's, yeah, so that's usually the the photo yeah. feature. So yeah. now it's, it has, so it's through the camera. What the heck? I'll have to check that out. I didn't know I could do that. Yeah, look at you. Who knew? I, obviously, I didn't. Now, question on business cards because yeah. you, you do collect a lot of business cards. I do. And what's the one thing that differentiates a business card? I've done this forever. I have 
I mean, there's a lot of things that I think about when I want to make my card stand out, but put but your picture photo. on it. Yeah. Yes. Photo. Yeah. You put your photo on a business card and it stands out because people are, are, you know, you mean like visual. this? Exactly. <laughs> National day. Every day. The whole one side is my photo here. So. The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 12. Get back to discovering the latest in technology with the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. Well, we are continuing App Wars, and I will do the pleasure, Steve, of not singing to you this time. Oh, come on. I know you get excited about these things. No singing, no chair dancing. What is this show becoming? It's serious. Uh oh. It's App Wars. <laughs> I, I think we should be doing the show at Applebee's after nine o'clock. That's it. Yeah. You know what? Because those That's, are good apps. This is this is what we're doing. <laughs> Half price apps. We need the Yarbo, and we need a we need a sponsor for App Wars. Oh, there we go. And we should actually they should bring apps into the studio. I like that. So idea. we could have like chicken wings and whatever. I'm still stuck on the type of sandwich I'd have the burglar make me before <laughs> were you? they left. I yeah. forgot to ask you back. What would you have them make? Uh, it depends on the mood I'm in. All right. Like right pastrami now. Pastrami on rye. Uh, or, really? Yeah. Do you have pastrami most of the time in your fridge? No. So you'd have to actually I, I'm send just, I'm kind the of, thief out I'm the burglar. A, a Reuben or something. Okay. I, I don't know what I'm hungry Interesting. for. Interesting. I'm not, I've never been a big. Reuben type of really? person, I guess. Yeah, my favorite yeah. sandwich of all time, but in, in I'm very discerning about it. Monte Cristo. Oh yeah, they're good, but nobody uses dense enough bread. You have to have a really good rye or pumpernickel that's a heavy bread, so it doesn't soak up the so grease. Where's, where's the best place you've had a Monte Cristo at? Uh, Las Vegas. Okay, I, I had one in Las Vegas that was too. They make like Benigans, for, you know. Yeah, yeah, too greasy. Okay, Sickies. Too greasy. I've they don't use the right kind of bread. Okay. For, for me, it's the bread. Gotcha. Because you have to have a dance bread that doesn't soak, soak up. up the grease. Yeah. 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 Cause, but they're so good. They are good. And they are good. The raspberry. Oh, my. Yeah. That's what makes it, right? All yeah. right. Note taking on your I'm phone. I'm really hungry now. Okay. Right. Yeah. Stop talking about food, please. Yeah. We're almost done. Okay. We really are. Everybody else, I hope you're, you know, waiting until after we're done here, too, so you can go have something to eat. Um. What do you use for taking notes on your phone? Depends on where the notes are. So I put a lot of notes in the notes section on contacts. Okay. Um, do you have but, a place, though, that you generally, like if somebody were to come up to you and, yep. okay. Inkpad. I okay. Use, I use Inkpad a lot. Never heard of this. Um, right there. See? Inkpad. Okay. And you can go in and I use <laughs> Gee, for some reason, there's a lot of Menards lists in here. <laughs> go spend too much time there. But uh, uh, it allows you to go in and uh, you can file everything. I'll take a picture with this so I keep receipts. Yeah. So when I'm itemizing for taxes, I, I know that, okay, I went and bought home this, 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 and it was part of a construction project. and. Here's the receipt and just forward it to my accountant and mm. finds a good stuff for taxes. So ink pad. Ink pad. Yeah, that sounds like a great app. I use uh uh Evernote. I've used that for uh -huh. a lot of years. E V E R N O T E. Uh you'll see a green elephant on it if you're <laughs> gonna download that one. I'm just saying <laughs> that you if you don't get the the clone of it or whatever. My, my ink pad is just a, a legal pad. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, ink pad, pad sounds great. And I I think the features are very similar between the two. Is yours free? Yeah. Okay. My uh, Mine is too. Evernote's Everything free. Everything I got's free. Okay. There is, there is a pro version with Evernote. I do have the pro version for it. But the pro version allows me to have teams. So if we're working on something oh, together, yeah. then I'm allowed to share it with you and things. So. Um, all right. Well, that's good. Mine's that's not that ink, fancy. Ink pad. That sounds great. It, it really it, does. It, no frills, no bones. Just it, it, it functions the way I need it to function. Well, you have the ability to, to shoot, you know, to take pictures of mm -hmm. receipts and things. So I think that's pretty cool. Actually, that, that's not bad at all. So, um, all right. Next on my list, I'm going through, um, are you a musician at all? Do you play guitar or anything? No. Wish I did. Okay. I always wanted to play the saxophone. Okay. 
I use, uh, I play it, I dabble, and that's the best word I can describe with the guitar a little bit. I guess I play a little banana, banana a little banana, a little bananjo. <laughs> Ban. So it's more like you dribble. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he doesn't dabble. He dribbles. I have a uh, cigar box guitar. I mean, all these things. But there's a uh, an app called Guitar Tuna. I've heard of that. It's 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 great. You can take and you can you can set you know if you want to, if you're playing ukulele you can you can tune your instruments with guitar tuna. Not so, just an Ario Speedwagon song. That's correct. Or album. Guitar tuna. T U N A oh. is a Ario Speedwagon. It, it was an album. Uh, you can um, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> well, I've heard that saying many yeah, times. Yeah, but that was an album. I didn't Mario know Speedwagon that. Album. Um, are you familiar with uh, IFT? IFT. I F T T T. No. So this is so. There's another app called Zapier, and there's another one now too that's come out. But IFT was the kind of the first of these. Uh, it stands for If This Then That. Okay, I'm familiar with that. Okay, saying so. You can, it's recipes. So you can go, if my car reaches this GPS coordinate, then the lights in my garage will turn on. So it, it's it, interesting. It combines these different types of apps to create a recipe. So if this triggers, then this other thing goes. If I take a picture, like a Google map, and if I'm a half a block away from my house, my garage door and lights will come on. That's correct. You could do that with if, yeah, if, and, and so here in our studio, I don't know if you knew this, but on the outside of this building, I have, um, Wi-Fi LED lights on here, right? Mm -hmm. So if the international space station flies overhead, <laughs> then the lights on my building will start to flash. So it combines that, that other app that shows the space station. Oh. Well, you know, it, it knows it's, you know, yes, exactly. So it combines those things to make that happen. And if you ever come by this building in the evening, you will see it starting to light up if the International Space Station comes by. All right. I got a question for you. Just because one of the things that I run into with apps, and I've got page after page after page, and I try to not put too many apps on my phone because I lose them. And forget the deep sleep stuff yep. and the stuff that you don't use a whole lot. Yep. But how do you organize? Is there an app to organize your apps? I don't know if there's an app. That's a great question. But I do use folders. So I'll have a Google folder. I'll have, you know, right. like if you have I've got a, a Microsoft folder and a Google you, folder. Like a travel a folder. Yeah. Yeah. So you can organize it that way. So you can hit the travel folder and then your orbits and your Expedia and whatever open up in there. Right. I think that's the, and I've been thinking about doing more of that too, because my phone, same thing. It's insane. I yeah. Mean, trying to find an app. You're like, I know it's here. Somewhere. Right. right. Kind of like when you get pulled over by police and you're like, I, I know I've got my insurance here somewhere. Speaking of which, that just happened to my wife. Do you know that uh, um, that's a great thing to do is take a photo of your insurance and your registration card? Yes, it is. And you have it on your phone. Well, a lot of insurance companies will have on their app, uh, just like yes. Game and Fish with yeah. your hunting and fishing license. Never thought about that. Yeah, but that's right. But I've, I've got my insurance app. Yeah. And I can just pull up my insurance right there. But if you don't have that, then take a picture of those and then right. put those on like on your on in a folder actually just put the picture picture in a folder called vehicle or whatever and then you'll have that information if you ever do get pulled over yep well it's been fun it has been fun it's been a great great tech ranch and uh, uh we look forward to seeing everybody again next week actually i just want to have some apps i'm kind of <laughs> hungry right <laughs> let's now go, let's go eat <laughs> And that's a wrap on another fantastic episode of The Tech Ranch. Remember, if you have any questions or want to suggest topics for future shows, visit thetechranch.com and send us your thoughts. You can also listen to past episodes and watch exclusive interviews not featured on the radio show. Be sure to follow Marlo and Steve on social media by clicking the links at thetechranch.com. Until next time, keep exploring the world of living with technology.
The Tech Ranch. Just before.